And welcome to Green Man and the Geek, Philly Special Edition. Yeah, I'm John Bozo Truth Daily with me, Aaron Gleeman of The Athletic. And I'm sorry we've been away for so long. They don't care. <laughs> Nobody missed us. <laughs> Philly not so special edition, John. Uh, uh, here was a question I had. So John went to, to Philadelphia. We, told, we all talked him into it. That's, yeah, that's, that's right. I didn't want to go. Well, you were <laughs> more ambivalent than I would have ever expected <laughs> right, initially. Yeah, right. And then everyone guilted him in. We we all were at uh, the Loon watching Do uh, Young Park on on Jeopardy the other day, <laughs> right. and everybody was like, "Oh, you guys have so much fun in Philly." And John's like, "Oh, we're not we're not going." To-. And by the end of the night, John's like, "All right, we're going to Philly." <laughs> we had tickets set up for him. It was so great. Like everybody kind of came right. together That's and forced right. John right. and Chris to go to Philly right. to, for the World Series. Uh, Three game, three, four, five were in Philly. Yes, you got you guys got tickets to all three. Yeah, and they're and, supposed to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right, delayed by <laughs> by rain. Delayed by, yeah. So Monday night we spent at a uh, bar uh, near the stadium. I'm shocked by that. I'm shocked <laughs> with uh, old friends who also had tickets to the game, and everybody then by the and, and the whole the whole place was. We, we went there both on that night and then on a night of an actual game. And it was far busier that night because nobody wanted to head over to the stadium early. Because right. We all kind of, in the rent. Everybody was kind of, well, everybody was kind of convinced it was probably right. going to get canceled anyway. But so John, so they game three, four, five were in Philly. They had tickets to all three. John being a good father? Question mark. <laughs> your son goes to, uh, what, Drexel? Yeah. I don't know if we're supposed to say that. Yeah, he can know. go there. There's, That's a, fine. there's thousands of people there or whatever. Uh, in, which is near Philly or in Philly. Right. And, so Chrissy, your wife, is from Philly and a big Phillies fan. John has obviously adopted them as his, uh, you know, one, team. one B team yeah. or two, number two team. Sure. But Riggs, first of all, I don't really perceive Riggs as a huge baseball fan in general. Right. So was his take on it? Because you, he went with Chrissy for game one or game three. Yes. Well, he was free that Tuesday night, so he was supposed to be going game four. But was his <laughs> but take then on it? Got pushed back, so he went to game three. First of all, I'm not giving my kid a, an F in World Series to get no matter what. <laughs> so that's good on you. But was his take when you said to him, "Here's we, the best. We're going to pick you. Yeah. Pick a game and go." Was his take on it just basically? How often am I going to get to go to a World Series game, or does he actually care? Like, is he? No, uh, he's not a baseball fan. Right, at all. that's what so, I, I mean, thought. He, here's here's the best part about it. Uh, yeah, he do, he does not care about baseball. That's he doesn't why really I was follow baseball at all. Right? But he was sort of like a, yeah. World Series game. Now he did go to Game One Sixty Three with us. Oh, so he's been long, yeah, he's yeah. been at great yeah, baseball games like where everything is on that, the line. So then, yeah, he was like yeah sixth grade or something. Right. He was maybe ten yeah. years old, twelve years old, okay. something like that. He didn't know better at that point, right? Um, his brain has <laughs> solidified right, right, now. Right, right. Uh, so he kind of knows what that's like, what that experience sure. is like, et cetera, right? So he, he, he's interested. But because he just doesn't follow baseball and doesn't really follow this stuff the same way yeah. we do, when we told him, oh, we've got two tickets, he's like, oh, could you get a third? Yeah. As if we're going to a July yeah. game at Target Field, yeah. like he just he just had no idea. Can you get the whole row, and, and, and we're, and we're like, out. Chris is like, um, yeah, if they're, they're, mortgage they're, 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 they're retailing for seven hundred bucks for standing room only on on StubHub yeah. right now. Like, no, we're not just going to pick you up a third one. And he's like, oh, okay, I, I mean that's fine, no big deal, I guess. And I was like, well, if you want to go, go. And actually, I just, I was said to Chrissy. uh I hope he gets to see the best game of the series. Which he you know, did. Which he did, especially Definitely. for a Philadelphia well, fan, right? Right? <laughs> right? I mean, uh, yeah, the stadium was absolutely rocking the night that he was there. And then a the, little bit different. And then the, the Mush John night. Bonus came in <laughs> and they lost both games you went to. I was <laughs> thinking about this. Well, yeah, they yeah. literally went from what he, five home runs to a no hitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think they were the first baseball team in history oh, yeah, to so ever you hit. You saw a game four. Four was the no yeah, hitter. I saw the no hitter. That's oh, that's cool, sort of. Uh, I mean, didn't feel that cool. No, but I just mean to be able to say you. You know, I get it. Believe. Well, here's the thing. That was one of the things I was talking about today. Is like I'm often asked, "Oh, have you ever seen a no hitter in person?" Yeah, I haven't. And and the answer I'm always like is like, I think I have, but not maybe at the major league level. I think I saw some at the minor league level. Okay. Like we went to one of yeah, the center, not, right? Which is not the same, right? Yeah, I, think I saw them in high school, <laughs> right? But I'm also like, yeah, but I. I mean, it didn't leave enough of an impression that I even really remember it. 
I'm going to remember this one. <laughs> oh, you're going to remember the second World Series no-hitter of all time? Yeah. The first one in six, 60 years or whatever. This one I will remember. What was it? it was in the... I, t- despite my attempts to forget it. Was it in the 60s or the 50s, Don Larson? 56? 66? I don't 56, know. I 56, I think. 56. Yes, that's been, it's been a while. You were in... What were you, in high school then? <laughs> uh, I did start to think... Yeah, I got bummed out that you... First of all, it's nice that you sent your son there. I'm sure he appreciated it. <laughs> Maybe uh, I wouldn't. Have. He, had, he had an awfully good time, I think. Yeah, I mean that's nice bonding between him and his mom. But yeah, I wouldn't mind him. Uh, and then you just, coming through at least one time with runners in scoring position and that three-two loss on went. No, but it felt Thursday. good that you brought the Twins' momentum into the Philadelphia <laughs> for the Phillies. And so then you just so game three, which was the first game right. of Philly, your wife and son went, and you just went to a bar. That's right. Watched it. Yeah. Did yeah, we you were at, meet up with them afterward, or did you guys just... I met up with Chrissy afterwards. Riggs went home and went right. to bed. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was midnight, and <laughs> he was like, I gotta, I've got classes in the morning. Riggs did the math <laughs> I've often done uh, with your family, which is, it's all reversed, which is the son, the college-age son is like, <laughs> man, I can't hang with these... <laughs> Two old parents, they're just nuts. Well, that was... That was I got to go home and when, study. When COVID happened... Uh, yeah, we were the bad roommates. Oh, I remember. Because, yeah, you he was in your spare bedroom here. He came <laughs> right, home. That's right. Um, and you guys moved from a, a house in South right. Minneapolis to right. now downtown. And when we bought the condo, we had we said, listen, we, we decided one of the reasons we're going to get a condo is it had to have two bedrooms. It had to be a two-bedroom condo because if things go sideways for either of the kids, we want them to know they've got yeah. a place to stay, right? They've got things. But you but, didn't want it to be – you put a Murphy bed in there. You didn't want it to be – I'm not kidding. He put exactly a Murphy right. No, this was exactly part of – this was, was exactly here, part of – that was, I was the second part of the equation. They brought that. We don't want it to be – very comfortable for you right. to stay there. It's we want here, you to be uncomfortable. But you're not going to enjoy it here. So start <laughs> applying for jobs. Start and, figuring out the new plan. But yeah, he was here because I remember. Yeah, we we didn't do a ton of shows during COVID, obviously, because there wasn't that much to talk about. But we'd be doing shows here, and I remember you saying one time, "I was like, oh, do you want to go downstairs and do it? Like, mm-hmm. I, I hate to wake Riggs." And you're like, yeah, he already yelled at us the other day because <laughs> we were up too late. And he said he was trying to – he had a test the next morning. And I'm like, what a strange reality you've built yeah. where you're, you know, at the time where the 19-year-old son or whatever was like, keep it down out there <laughs> to a couple of 50-year-olds. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's the bonus family in a nutshell, really. But yeah. I t- I'll tell you, uh, you know, I'm sure it was a lot of fun at – um at the stadium during the five home runs. Like, I'm sure yeah, that stadium was three. absolutely rocking, right? It was also super crazy well, yeah, fun at the bar. Like, I didn't feel bad for you. Like, you, were, you were in your element. Like, McKinley, certainly. Yeah, I mean, we ended up, <laughs> ended up bonding with uh, the guy next to me who was also in town. He was from Houston. Uh, he And he wasn't a huge Astros fan, but he happened to be traveling on business. It was like, I could stay yeah. in Delaware or I could stay in Philly. Why wouldn't I stay in Philadelphia? And then uh, the bartender and then his sister was sitting next to us and blah, blah, blah. So we ended up having just a... I mean, (laughs) every time they hit a home run, they immediately... The bar had the music thing perfectly lined up so that every time a home run had immediately that new... That Philadelphia World Series song started belting out Dancing on My Own. Yeah. You know about this? Which is Robin. Yeah. Well, Robin read the original, but then... But then it was re-recorded by a guy named Scott Callum, and then it was Tiesto that ended up making a uh, dance remix yeah, of it, yeah. and that's what everybody went crazy about. And the the, the Phillies players decided that was their their anthem that's for, for for the for the series, and it's, which is funny because it's a lament, like it's yeah. all about how you no, lose I was somebody. Say, when I used to go uh, to karaoke, uh, try to pick up women, many women would sing dancing on my own and i started <laughs> listening to the lyrics of it at karaoke right it's a good song but yeah it's like i'm sitting here the person i want to dance right. with basically over there having fun and i don't remember the. i'm dancing on my own yeah, i mean right. yeah i'm just i'm just and, and they not, don't even see and, and, me and, they don't yeah, yeah all that's stuff. right yeah it's, it's a little bit which by the way just absolutely like it is probably the perfect song for philadelphia which just has a massive insecurity complex Right, that's yeah. why they are so passionate about so much and so insular in a lot of ways, right? Yeah, um, although for, also for them sort of to adopt it, sort of true in Minnesota, and a little well, bit. a little bit, 
but yeah, we don't have a little the success bit. to a balance little bit. that out. But we're not we're not uh, sandwiched between New York City and Washington D.C. No, you're saying, <laughs> you you're saying it's mean? Like, different being sandwiched between <laughs> Bismarck and Green Bay or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like no, they got right. that financial center, they got the political center, and then they're just sort of right. uh, Philadelphia, where everything's uh, yeah. you know mean. We have the traits of <laughs> that, know? except you know? we can always say at least we're better than Iowa. I, 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 I love that um, Philadelphia has that attitude. Yeah. The kind of F you attitude. And the sort of dancing on my it, it turns dancing on my own into a lament to sort of a F you, I'll just dance on my right. own. And that and that fit that team but also, exceptionally like, well. I remember as well. the Nationals used Baby Shark as their big song, right? <laughs> right so I mean yeah, it's, it's not it doesn't have to but, fit perfect. I mean but I do not everybody has Steve Perry uh in the crowd to sing right. some, you know, number one hit right. for Well, I gotta tell you, I mean that was one of the reasons I wanted to go to Philly though. I wanted to get a sense of it's been thirty years since we've had any championship run in the Twin Cities, right? Like oh, we, I mean, yeah. we've never really had Correct. a finals here that mattered to us, yes. right? Um, and I kind of wanted to remember what that's like, what the craziness is like, and what the crazy – what I remembered is uh, it's all-encompassing. Now, I mean, Philadelphia is a sports town to begin with, You're saying right? it was fun. That Minnesotans <laughs> should keep wanting it, to do it, that? Uh, I would not actually say it was fun. <laughs> I would say it was all-encompassing. Yeah. It was both fun and it was miserable. And in baseball, that happens every 24 hours. Right. You know, whereas in basketball or hockey or something like that, you go two, three days. Or, or, football, or football, you get the week, you to, get the week to sort of digest things and figure out things. Out. No. After game three... It was we're going to, we're going to win a world championship. Everything's going, and then the next day they get no hit. They get, they get no hit. Shut out, and it's like it's all falling to hell. And then, and then you know, game five. By the end of game five, it was we're just done. We're by the end done. of game five, it was at least the Eagles are eight and zero. <laughs> exactly Basically. right. Yeah, which happened on the same day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they, right. they, went, they went eight and zero that same night against Houston. <laughs> yeah, exactly against Houston. <laughs> which, by the way, of, which is strange of, of the. Um, I've got to imagine of the people who were furious or just dejected by the fact that that all those games, games three, four, and five, were each delayed by one day. Amazon Prime has to be like, are you effing kidding me? Yeah, because they pay all this money for the NFL rights. Right. They get, they've had crap games every Thursday night forever. They finally get one in it versus the number five t- city in the t- in the in the. Uh, in the United States versus number seven in the United States. Let me just let me just finish this. And they're like, I'm gesturing. And, and, and on World Series, uh, that it's on the off day of the World Series. We're going right. to get all of Philadelphia and all of Houston to sign up for Amazon Prime so we can they can watch this important game, especially Philadelphia. Yeah. And instead, not only not only does that get, uh, now the game, the World Series game fall on it, it's the same two teams and nobody in those like. Of all the cities in the United right. States, They're the two that are going to be watching it the least yeah. are those two. <laughs> Yeah, they're hurting. Most people, most, most people in Seattle, most more people in Seattle watched that game than in Philadelphia or Houston. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I didn't watch it. Uh, <laughs> right. Certainly, um, all because yeah, it got delayed by a game. When will Amazon catch a break? Do you think? <laughs> it's like the Yankees, I always say. <laughs> when will the Yankees catch a break? Um, I was thinking about this. When is the last time you attended a playoff game in person, mm-hmm. and your team, or in this case? Your adopted team, because they're right. your wife's team, right, right, right. won. I was trying to think of mine, and it's a while ago. I mean, I... Because obviously, oh, it's not uh, the Twins. For, no, it was the Wild. Okay, yeah, I don't go to Wild Blast It was the games. Wild, and it was over the St. Louis Blues, and they ended up uh, clinching the first round versus the St. Louis Blues in, I mean, it had to be 2008, 2009, right. something like that, I, I would think. I remember it was a June day. I knew it was gorgeous. We went out afterwards and had a blast in St. That's Paul. actually not that much more recent than mine, which mine was the Timberwolves. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, I might be well, wrong, but yeah, it definitely I mean, wasn't that, the Twins. That was the first one I was going to be going with. I remember when the Timberwolves moved on to the Western Conference Finals. Yes. I was at that game. Yeah, the Sacramento game. The Sacramento game. Yeah, so was game. I. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The right. Best game of all time, I would argue. Or you know, Timberwolves right. game of yeah. all time. But like you, like okay, I don't go to Wild playoff games. I've been. I think to, the Wild one was after. I that. think I've been to one Vikings playoff game at the Dome one time. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm limiting myself obviously to the pool of winnable playoff games. But I go to a lot of Wolves game playoff games in the past. I've been to right. almost every Wolves playoff game, um, and obviously Twins. But 
You I didn't, I didn't go to the Minneapolis Miracle. Yeah, I'm trying to think of one left. You go that. okay, so you just went to Philly, you saw them lose twice. Yeah. You went to New York to watch the Twins lose the wild card game that's true. five years whatever that's it was, true. five years yeah. ago. Um Yeah, I'm not suggesting you're a mush. <laughs> I'm not saying you're not. But it's it's funny that yeah. like in a market with four major teams, I guess we should have been going to Lynx playoff games is the lesson yeah, to be I'm trying to think if I have. My mom went to one, I think. Uh, and I don't think uh, I saw Minnesota United clinch a playoff spot, but I don't think I've been to Minnesota United playoff yeah. game. Anyway, that's what I, I started thinking <laughs> about that. So, yeah, mine's been t- almost coming up on 20 years. Got to be since I've been in attendance at a playoff game. And I've certainly been in attendance at some friggin' losses. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. That's I'm trying to think if I've been to any go for that. NCAA tournament games. That yeah, counted? but they on the like you traveled to go to them? Yeah, we've I, we'd, I've definitely done that, it, but I don't remember if I've done one recently. I don't think we've done that recently. I think it was too young when I had, but I don't, I don't know think that we they've did won that. a whole lot of them recently. Yeah, right. they won one. I'm, anyway, that was my point. <laughs> Bring the room down a little bit. <laughs> I like to do that. Uh, so the off season is officially underway. Now that John's Phillies have lost, uh, yeah, it, it was a funny. Like the Phillies were, I think they had the best record in the second half for National League, or the second best record. Like they. They fired Joe Girardi, their manager, because right. they were in fourth place, like in what June? Yeah, uh, and then had a you know O six Twins type of finish, sort of. Right. Uh, but they still finished third in their division, right? And, and, they, only, and they were not close, right? They were ten games back, right? Nine games back. And they were the last team into the playoffs in either league, and they only won eighty seven eighty seven games. games. And so, look, I'm not suggesting uh, the Twins were as good as the Phillies, obviously, uh, but what I am saying is. I feel like if we were Phillies podcasters, first of all, imagine that. Um, if we were Phillies podcasters right now, I'd be drinking water instead of water. Uh, um, we would have been talking about this team in much the same way that we talked about the Twins for a lot of the season, which is ju- this team should be better. This team has the star power, but not the depth. Right. Uh, some injuries hurt it. Sure. And, you know, June, July, maybe even yeah, August, we'd be, saying, for most of them. we'd be saying right. they might not even make the playoffs with a right. $200 million pick. They, All, they barely did. They won right. it by one game. And then when they did get into the playoffs, people would have been saying, oh, yeah, what value is it to just sneak into the playoffs? You know, you finished third in the division. You were a barely over 500 team. All the stuff that we've heard about the Twins. But – Everything is corrected by winning in the playoffs. Yeah, right. The same way that everything good, like in 2019 for the Twins, where they right. dominated for six months, right. everything is wrecked or ruined by not doing well or not doing anything in the playoffs. Right. And it's it's interesting. Like again, I'm not saying the Twins were as good as the Phillies. They're not as good as the Phillies. Um, and I think the way the Phillies played in the second half is more representative than the 87 wins, probably. But that's a very easy thing to say after the fact. And and and. I read before this year's playoff, I think it might have been Jay Jaffe at, at Fangraphs, always does a thing where he says, what, what is the correlation between like last 10 games of the season and playoff success? September right. and playoff success. Right. Second half and play, and there's none. No, there's none matter. whatsoever. Right. There is no. And so you go, well, yeah, of course the Phillies made a, right. a playoff run. They were great in the second half, but then you go, well, the 06 twins were great in the second half or, you know, any number of teams. Right. So I don't know. It, it made me think of what we talk about often with the twins, which is if the twins were not, you know, oh, and a thousand in the playoffs over the last 20 years, this would be a much you know, more uh, easily digestible message to push, which is that the biggest key, the biggest thing you can do to try to win a World Series is just to get into the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Like, and and shit happens right uh, after that. I mean, I, the, w- watching this team, watching the Phillies up close, what it reminded me of more than anything was the 87 Twins. Like, this was a team that was not that great. They just got into the playoffs. And then what happened is... Like their core of their team just started hitting home runs, and they right. started hitting home runs in bunches all the time, and they just marched right through, you know, uh, three different, uh, three and almost four series where they were underdogs, right? Right. And in game, they went on the road to St. Louis. They had a three game set at St. Louis to advance out of the to advance out of the wild card spot, right? They're the sixth wild card spot. Game one of that, <laughs> they were down. 
Three nothing, two yes, nothing. I watched it going into the top and of the Heisley ninth. Heisley came in for the Cardinals, who is like the Johan Duran of the right. Cardinals. He throws 103 miles an hour. And the 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 it was not the Phillies hitting a bunch of home runs. It was this ball happened to fall in. Yeah. This one just out, outside yeah. the reach of the shortstop. Like it was a bunch of where did this come from? Yeah. And they just kind of kept happening, and they ended up scoring like five runs in that inning. Like if they if that inning from hell doesn't happen to Heisley and the Cardinals, I don't think we're seeing the Phillies in this thing. Right, because like they probably lose that wild right, card right. series. Well, instead, when only... the Cardinals ended up going like through their entire best of their bullpen arms, and they had to play the next day against the Phillies, and right. the Phillies end up having to um, you know, take them out of that, yeah, it's of that weird. game. It's like, to me, there's no more sort of analyzable, <laughs> that's not even a word, sport than baseball. Because it's really just a series of individual matchups. Right. And that's why there's so many more numbers in baseball and analytics in baseball and all this stuff. Because there's less interaction on every play. Right. Like to analyze a running back in right. the NFL, right. you have to analyze the offensive line. You have to analyze where the defense was positioned right. and all this stuff. There's some of that in baseball, obviously. But it, it's so broken down into the pitcher versus hitter yeah, matchup. Right. And then once that ends, once the ball is put in play, it's the ball versus the defense, right. basically, right. and all that stuff. And so there's no more... You know, analyzable. And I would also guess that preseason projections for baseball are as a whole, you wouldn't know this by our uh, bats, over under bats, but as a whole, much more <laughs> accurate than most yeah. other sports because you can get the baseline is fairly easy, you know, setting aside injuries and all that. Right. And yet the flip side is the playoffs are well, I would, so I, much I would less say, I would say the game itself. Well, each individual so game, right? Unpredictable, right? I mean, that's why winning right. 60% versus winning 40% is such a big deal. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like that. Well, then, and then what happens is everyone goes, well, the Phillies were this and they were that. And you associate or you assign sort of moral things to them or, or, right. you know, they had the heart of a, this and they did. Well, they, and their I manager mean, I, I brought mean, them. It, and it's like, I, all that's pr- probably true. I'm not saying it's not true. But none of it matters if you they hadn't won like a bunch of coin flips, basically. <laughs> right, yeah, and right. it's weird that I think almost any other market would be able to more grasp that than Minnesota because you, it's very tricky to say that. And I believe that with every ounce of my being. Uh, and I think anybody who's smart about baseball, including, you know, Billy Bean saying his famous, you know, uh, right. quotes about the playoffs and Moneyball and all that. Believe that, and I think it's you know undeniably true. And that you go, well, if that were true, how do the Twins lose you know twenty coin flips in a row? Right. To which I say, I don't know. Right? Yeah. I, what do you want from me? Well, uh, especially so, because, especially because on the front end of that, you know, so much has been made in a sort of legendary aspect of boy, those eighty-seven and ninety-one teams, the chemistry and like that. Right. Those were teams about heart. That's what. Right. Well, you, you know. Um, Maybe I mean I'm not saying anybody, those teams didn't have a lot of heart. Think that about the, the 87 team in August of 1987, or even <laughs> right. September. Well, of listen, and I'm not saying that team didn't have a lot of heart. Right, a lot of teams have a lot of heart. Of course, I would say right yeah. uh, that if you buy into that for 10 years, 15 years, right. it's hard to abandon that when suddenly those coin flips aren't going uh, your yeah. way. No, I agree. You know I, mean? I, like, mean, I agree with all right, that. Did Koski and Minkiewicz and Jock Jones right, not and Tori heart. Hunter not have heart? Or did they just... <laughs> and Johan Santana and Brad Radke? I mean, you're talking about guys who we know have right. that chemistry, have yeah. that heart. So, I mean, that's what right. makes... I say this to PA a lot, because whenever I go on PA, which I'm doing in an hour or so... He always wants me to like declare a heavy favorite and tell him who to bet on and all that. And I just give him this this speech over and over that I just kind of gave. And it's like it's very – to start with I don't bet on baseball anymore, PA. Well, yeah, I should say that. <laughs> I don't say that. There's a reason why yeah. I don't bet on baseball oh, anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. When I, yeah, when I was at um, NBC initially, I had a daily column that they had me write where I would give picks. Uh-huh. I think I would do a pick of the day and then like – I think of two other games on a full scheduled day. Right. And then we tracked it all season. And then at one point, because they sold a sponsor for it and all that stuff, and it was NBC. And then at one point, I remember like a new somebody took over to the, the department and was running things and was like, wait, we're running a gambling column. Do you make it clear you're not actually gambling on these games? And I'm like, no. And they're like, well, first of all, you have to do that. And second of all, we probably shouldn't. And then 20 years later or 15 years later, 
now everything's sponsored right. by gambling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, they right, got right, the right. odds on the broadcast right, for right. gambling, and it's like I don't know, I don't know. It's it's funny that we still have to stay away from that. Okay, so off season is underway. We're going to talk uh, about all the removals of the forty man roster for the Twins, which is a bunch of guys. A became free agents just automatically. Uh, a handful of other guys became free agents when the Twins declined their options. Right. One of them had his option picked up and is back with the team, which we'll talk about. And then, of course, Carlos Correa became a free agent by opting out. Uh, I should have had everyone sit down before I said that. I realized. <laughs> uh, RIP, I tweeted this, but rest in peace. Twitter had a lot of fun with that. To <laughs> us having to say on literally every episode, <laughs> Carlos Correa is going to opt out. I, it started on uh, March, what, 17th, 2022, and it yep. ended on November 7th, 2022. Started in a Dublin buff breakfast buffet. And yeah. <laughs> we should throw Philadelphia championship. If we had right. a producer and an actual team behind this podcast, we would cut up. Uh, a best of <laughs> of just us saying, well, he's going to opt out, obviously. But, but uh, yeah, I, I want to go back and read all the comments of every article when I said that. And people were like, yeah, but didn't he say he likes it here? Um, so we're going to get on all that. Plus uh, some some updates I wanted to lay out. Like what are the actual timelines for some of this stuff? Non-tender timeline, rule dra- five draft and all that, which I, I looked all that up. Um but before that, I screwed up when I went to Philadelphia. I don't believe in that. For a bringing second. some feels yeah. with me to the city of Philadelphia yeah. because anxiety, sleeplessness, they had all kinds of issues going on last week yeah. in Philadelphia. I think a fair amount of time Philadelphia has that, those problems anyway. Now they usually deal with that with Yingling. <laughs> Or what's like the most famous Philadelphia? Yingling. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that's like that's Pottsville the, or something. Third, like that. yes. But that's the Philly Close enough, yeah. Uh, but we here handle that yeah, sort of thing with better. CBD. Yeah. Aaron Gleeman handles that with uh, yeah. CBD and feels. And I've tried it. Um, and I, what I liked about it is all the information I could get about trying it. I was a little hesitant to jump into tasting you – know, or not tasting uh, – trying, you know, uh, something that was going to – yeah. Alter my mood a little bit or take the yeah, edge I have, off. I have no hesitancy. <laughs> People who went to high school with me can relate right, to that, right. can attest to that. Uh, I'll try anything once or 10 right. times. <laughs> right. Um, feels, yeah, I'm, uh, I started using CBD because I couldn't get to sleep and it doesn't really alter your mood or anything and there's no taste to it or aftertaste. Right. It's not, there isn't like a drug effect. No. It's just basically like a calming sort of, Put you at ease a little bit so right. that you can, for me at least, slow your brain down right. enough to yeah. go to sleep. And it's also – you can use it for anxiety and various other things. You know, I call it quieting my body a little bit yeah. sometimes. You know, it, does, it feels like my body's kind of twitching or whatever. But. And the beauty of feels, which is F-E-A-L-S, is that, like you said, you can read all about it, including some third-party independent uh, work on it. If you just have questions that they have on their website yep. to answer that, you can read actual like papers that have been done on it. Um, and also, they'll send it right to you, uh, you know, hassle-free, delivered to your door. You know, it's it's naturally reduces stress, anxiety, pain, sleeplessness. There's no hangover to it, or you, you know, you don't get addicted to it. You just put a couple of drops right on your tongue. A few minutes later, you're like. Oh, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm and you can, chilled out a little bit. You can start feeling better with feels. You just become a member today by going to feels. Dot, that's F E A L S, like meals, feels.com slash gleeman. You'll get 50% off your first order Plus with free shipping. Free shipping. Yeah. That's F E A L S dot com slash gleeman to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash gleeman. Uh, and then also, it's time for Christmas. Christmas yeah. time. I've started doing some Christmas shopping. What are you going to get me, John? Uh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Have we ever gotten each no. other a present? Absolutely for not. <laughs> have, we, have either of us ever gotten each other a birthday present? My, my, uh, the only time I've get, the so. only time I've given you anything resembling a Christmas present was when I sent you a bill for the first uh, for all the for all the beer that I, yeah. we had we had bought the first couple years of the podcast. That was the closest thing you got to a present. We were somewhere and you had them bring me a piece of cake once for my birthday. I, I did. remember that. Yeah, I did. So I'm going to count that. That's more than I've done. <laughs> uh, but a good present that you could get is uh, Raycon. Oh my goodness. Uh, earbuds. Buds, yeah, which uh, my girlfriend, who's uh, in corporate America, doing you know hours long Zoom meetings all day, right. loves these because a they're just really good high quality earbuds. Right. Beyond that, though, the fit in your ear, the actual like physical fit in your ear, 
it's much easier to wear them for you know 90 minute meetings versus some of the other brands right. that you might even pay more for right. and and John and Chrissy go running with them which right. is also a factor if you're actually doing like physical activity yep. you don't want your ears to start being sore from wearing these and i can tell you these are really good you can all, it's they also, also they also start at about half the price right. so it's also about half the price <laughs> and also careful, good right. battery life pairs right. super easily to devices and to bluetooth and all that right. stuff it's just really easy to use uh, and they fit well and if you go to buy raycon like b u y buy raycon.com slash gleeman and then use the code early bf uh you get 20 percent off anything on the entire site that's any raycon product uh 20 percent off which almost they never almost never put that type of discount right uh or you can save even bigger and get 30 percent off raycon's exclusive holiday bundle so you go to Buy Raycon.com slash Gleeman and use the code early BF. Early BF. Like boyfriend, maybe? Sure. Sure. Why not? Okay. Uh, for 20% off, that's B U Y R A Y C O N. Buy Raycon.com slash Gleeman and use the code early BF. Yeah, do we know what early BF? I don't know what the BF is for. Early. I'm not going to make jokes because <laughs> they're a sponsor. Yeah, because they're a sponsor. <laughs> My brain immediately starts thinking dirty yes, things. And yeah, I'm bad at that. Um, okay. So the off season <laughs> is officially underway. Edwin, we have a $100 million contract already. Uh, yeah, Edwin, that's Edwin right. Diaz yeah. resigned with the right. uh, New York Mets, their closer. He was obviously the, the best. dream is dead for bringing him into Minnesota. Yeah. Was- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did an article. I did like a good, better, best free agent targets. And I did say one of them, I mean, we went, we went over the needs that we both thought they had. And my, one of mine was right handed relief. Right. And I didn't even list it. Like, they right. were never going right. to. Right. And I, I wouldn't want right. them to. I mean, I right. wouldn't want them to give a $104 million contract to a reliever. Although I will say he's obviously amazing. Uh, you know, he's probably one of the 10 best relievers ever, uh, right now in terms of just peak ability. He struck out over half the batters he faced last year or this past season. Can you imagine that? It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, like Duran. What did Duran have? High 30s or something. I mean, half is craziness. Right. Right. Like, yeah, that's right. Half the, I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, so he got a hundred million. So there's your market. That sets the market. Okay. Now it's a little different because, uh, they're owned by, uh, the richest owner in baseball. Uh, Steve Cohen. Sure. And not only is he the richest, but I think he has more net worth than like entire divisions, other divisions. And the only reason (laughs) he doesn't have more net worth than the other four owners of the NL East teams in his division is that the Braves are owned by a conglomerate, Liberty Media, which is like a, you know, multi multi billion dollar organization. But like, you know, however rich you think the Polads are, (laughs) for instance. Uh, he could, you know, buy and sell the bullets. So, like, the normal stuff that you would say, first How of all. How old is he? He's not that old. I would say 50s or 60s. Like, he's, you know. No, no, I meant Diaz. Oh. No, he's 60, John. He's uh, <laughs> No, he's like uh, late 20s. Late really 20s, well. like 28, okay. 29. Five years. I mean, the normal stuff you would say about a guy who, in a good year, is going to throw 70 innings. Right. So, to pay them, basically, I don't know, what is that? Three hundred thousand dollars an inning mm-hmm. is absurd yeah. on every level. Um, and the other normal stuff that you would say about a five-year contract like that is, well, okay, what are you gonna? What's the odds that this reliever is not gonna blow out his arm or you right. know fade away? Year four or five of that could be ugly. But what is he? What do they care? Like, what's the difference? Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, there's some limit to spending, but right <clears throat> in f- five years from now. It's not the Mets aren't going to be entering the offseason and going, I mean, we we just won the division title. We'd really like to try to re-sign, you know, fill in the blank player. But five years ago we agreed to give twenty million dollars to our reliever and just poor Steve doesn't have the money. I mean, this guy yeah, I mean, throws away twenty million dollars. He lost I, I was reading the um when Reddit started buying the GameStop stock because it was right. shorted yeah, yeah, by yeah, yeah, however that's right and they yeah. tried to screw up the, right. i mean they did yeah. screw up the market right he personally lost like almost 800 million dollars in like a week or something on right. that right. and di- he didn't even care it's like whatever so uh it's a little different <laughs> to play in that sandbox you know yes. what i mean like in terms of evaluating the contract because really if you're the yankees the mets the dodgers we should say like they're probably at the luxury tax and such so like an oh, extra 20 not only that they go 20 million dollars over it's probably 30 yes. million dollars they redid right. the luxury tax it's the steve cohen rule because they were so worried 
he was coming in right, right. as they were redoing the CBA, and they were right. so worried he was just going to disregard everything. Right. So they made the – it's tiered now, and, like, the fi- the fourth tier is basically just built for him. And it says, like, <laughs> if you go past, you know, $100 million over the luxury tax, it's – like you're taxed like three dollars for every dollar, so just to basically, but he still doesn't care. what does he care? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. um, it, I so much of free agency, and that's what separate. I mean, that's the real advantage a lot of times with a big payroll team, Yankees, you know, Mets sure. now, Dodgers, whatever, is that they don't really have to be concerned about the the value. So much as just the caliber of player. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. we're going to talk in a minute about right. Carlos Correa. Right. And so much of that discussion is going to be about, well, should the Twins be going seven years, eight years, 10 years? Should they go 28 million, yeah. 32 million, 35 million? And that stuff matters because the Twins in a given year, if they overpay by 12 million or 5 million or 8 million, whatever, that has an actual trickle down right. to the rest of the roster. Now it's all self-imposed in that sense, but sure w- for the Mets, let's say now with this current but it's self-imposed by twenty-three of the thirty teams. So right. there's only about four teams, right. four or five but teams. For the Mets, it's like, right. do we want to keep the best closer in baseball or not? And that's ninety percent of the decision. I mean, right. obviously, you'd like to sign the guy to a four-year, seventy million dollar deal instead of a five-year, sure. one hundred and five million dollar deal. But there's no real difference to that. And the, the big key is, do we want this guy or not? And obviously, right. you want the best closer in baseball. And so I think that's, you know, one of the advantages. It, it sort of, I don't know, it, it clarifies or it, it makes much more straightforward the decision making process because for teams like that, and we've seen that with the Yankees. Right. Um, we see that with the Cardinals, for that matter, who don't even have a huge pick. The Cardinals strategy for years with like Goldschmidt, Jim Edmonds, Scott Rowland, guys like that. Speaking of the Phillies, yeah, well, was, that, I was just going to bring let's up the just Phillies get as an the example. guy exactly. here, right? However, we can get him here in some mid. Mark McGuire was an example of that. Let's get the the, the elite, talented player here. Often an impending free agent or a guy with one more year. Yeah. Nolan Arenado, same thing. He was unhappy in Colorado, had an opt out clause. They said, let's just get the guy here. Let's get this top ten player here. And then we just won't let him leave. Right. And that, I mean, you know, that's basically what they did with all these guys. Right. And so the Twins <laughs> sort of tried to do the first half of that. They got Carlos Correa here. But the don't let him leave part is the tricky part because, you know, as we're going to talk about here, I guess we can just talk about it, which is like what should be their – it's like a game of chicken kind of. Right. Not, I don't even think between the Twins and Correa, but just the Twins and the other 29 teams, which is – like at some point, if the Yankees or these uh, 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 the yeah, Mets right. or the Giants or right. the Dodgers or you know whatever, at some point you've got to just decide this much is too much, right? You know, what I mean, all of a, you mean, would all, think. All, I mean, I mean, you and I can take a look at it and go. I mean, this, this is. I, I remember talking about this with the Maurer contract, right? You know, at some point, you know, everybody's like, "Oh, they've got to resign him," and I thought the numbers that were being floated in the newspapers and such for what they should be able to you know, pay the. You know, seven years, one hundred and forty million dollars, or something like that. Yeah. I'm like, I think the number's more like two hundred and twenty million. Like right. it's it something crazy, right? And, and you see, you, you, when you're playing in that atmosphere, it's easy to say, "Well, okay, does it matter if it's ten years, three hundred and thirty million dollars, or you know, eleven years, three hundred and sixty million dollars?" Right. right? Um, and I'm not sure that it necessarily does. I'm not sure that it is necessarily a big right. well, difference. Well, I mean, at, at that point, you're just. But at some point, you just have to say, "This is it's right. this much and no more." Like, and and that, you know, it, and I think we're going to have to decide that on Korea, right? Yes. If if they are serious you and about me bringing are back Korea, right? No, it's like you when you were looking at flights and tickets to Philly last week, right? You wanted to go. We right. we all uh, bullied you into wanting to go the last ten percent, <laughs> let's say. But if you would have looked, and actually, this is why you initially weren't sort yeah. part of it, weren't planning to go. You looked after the final out of the NLCS, right. and you went on, you know, StubHub right. or whatever, and it was eighteen hundred bucks for standing room only. And right. you thought, now, will the difference between whatever five hundred bucks, let's say, right. and fifteen hundred bucks? For a couple of tickets, sure. Is that for a ch- once in a lifetime right. experience? Am I? Do, I'm is really going to sweat a thousand? Is that going to change your day to day life? Right. For, you're fortunate, right? That right. no, it w- it was. But you still in your head, you're like, yeah. Ten well, years okay. from now, am I going to care about that thousand right. dollars? Is the answer. But right? in your head, you're but, saying, well, okay. At some point, if I say, say no, no, that doesn't matter. 
And then you could go, well, how about 5,000? <laughs> right. How exactly. about 10,000 right. a game? How right. about whatever? Exactly. And so I think that's what we're going to see with Korea. Unfortunately, then you also are, the Twins are also at a disadvantage for all the reasons we just talked about with the Mets. And it's self imposed. I mean, look, the, the poll ads could hand out a 10 year, $300 million deal. And it's not going to affect their day to day life whatsoever. Carlos Correa could sign a 10 year, $300 million deal with the Twins and then immediately announce that he was going to bat left handed and only DH. And that right. would be bad for the twins, but at, the poll ads wouldn't ha- even have to have like a family meeting about it right. in terms of their you know generational wealth. Well, and but and, and I think it's worth also pointing out that when you're talking about that high end here, you know, you might be able to say, "Listen, we're willing to really pony up. We're going to go, you know, ten years, three hundred and thirty million dollars. Like that's a crazy number." Right. Well, this guy's agent is Scott Boris. Like even if Correa goes, "Yeah, that's a great number. I'd, I'd happily take that." Well, Boris is also going to be like, yeah, but I think we can set a record here. He's like, going to let me take wait, that uh, to whatever yeah, other let's, team let's and tell him this yeah, is the, re- that, the number right. on the yeah, like, uh, how about How about we turn it into a, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a slight deal on the $33 million. You only have to pay uh, $31 million, but it's going to be 12 years. Right. Yeah, so you're, now we're at 375 yeah, what, was, what was Harper that, with well, the Phillies? This is exactly why I, I mentioned this because I've just been studying how the Phillies got there, right? And the yeah. Phillies and the Phillies built their, their championship team exactly the opposite of how the Twins do everything, right? They thought they had a youth movement coming through. Really, the only guy that paid off was Hoskins and maybe Nola. Right. Right. Everybody else, you know, real Mudo, huge money. Right, uh, they went out and got Castellanos and um, Schwarber this year for twenty well, million dollars. Wheeler each was a hundred something. Right. Million. Wheeler uh, three years ago, and Bryce Harper was. I think they ended up getting a three hundred and thirty million dollar deal for thirteen years, but it was thirteen right? years yeah. long. You know, and with a no trade, right? You know, which is basically a lifetime contract. Right, right. Or something. Yeah, I mean, I think, and and unfortunately, the twin when the twins are trying to play in that realm with a player like Correa, they self-imposed, but it's reality. They just have a lot more like factors that they need to account for. Right. Whereas if the Yankees or whoever, I don't think the Yankees will sign them, but they certainly could. The Yankees, it's more of a, do we value this player high enough as opposed to, can we make the money work? And once you start getting into you know, eight years, nine years, ten years at thirty or higher per season. I mean, that's a that's that's the point what, that we were just talking about. Every dollar after that makes you go like, when do when do we right. cry uncle here? When do we say no? And so yeah, well, I, and when, when, here's one of the things about that that at least my Philadelphia friends, my Phillies friends, fans, friends out there said one of the things that they liked about that contract, the Bryce Harper contract. They said that it's got a no trade clause, but it also has a no opt out clause. Right. So that at at the very least, it it felt like Bryce Harper was making a commitment. Yes, he was you know saying I mean? this he is was, where I'm going to play he, for the rest this, of my career. That's right. Basically. It was, and, you know, and I think that that's actually hadn't, not something I hadn't really thought about with those contracts is that if you're going to ask for a no trade clause, well then then right. then get the no get the opt out, or or if you if you know if if I'm going to ask you not to opt out after six years. I have to promise I'm also not right. going to trade you I think for six years. Like, I mean, is, and, the, and I think that would be something that might the problem might resonate though, with Korea is that I mean, opt out clauses as we've seen with Korea this season are player friendly. If sure. if you sign a ten year three hundred million dollar deal, but you can opt out after year three and year six, what happens is if you're healthy and productive and playing like an all star. After year three, you opt out and you go and search for another eight year deal because the market itself, you know, money has risen in right, baseball right. over the average three year period. And, you know, you're in position to negotiate. But if the flip side happens and you're injured or you struggle or you're just kind of mediocre, right. then you stay in the contract and the team gets that. There is no, it removes some of the upside or much of the upside sure. for the team. Cause if the player does well, he'll opt out. And right. if he doesn't do well, he gets to stick with the original terms. And then, you know, you can repeat it over and over. And that to me is going to, I bet, be a tricky part of this with Correa because if you're the twins, and you're already going far, far beyond your proven comfort zone with this thing. I mean, to, right. to make a call to Scott Boris about Carlos Correa, 
you've already spent more than you ever million. have. Right. I mean, certainly more than two hundred million, which they've never spent a hundred million. So, uh, the but the problem is if you're the twins, let's say you make him a eight year two hundred fifty million dollar offer. I think it's a good third place offer. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, that's twice <laughs> right? what they've ever offered anybody for anything ever. Yeah. So I mean, but I don't, I don't no, even know where you're offering whatever. that. To be but honest, but the problem is, like, let's say he goes, yeah, oh, okay, I actually like Minnesota. The two fifty's good. I'll do it. I don't know, whatever. I agree, and that's not going to be what he ends up signing for. But, but he says, okay, but here's what I want. I want an opt out after year two and after year five. Now that might be the way you get that deal signed, right. is to agree to that. But that's a relatively new thing that agents like Scott Boris, who are very smart, have have realized that they have the leverage in these very small openings. Sure. And, and we've seen it in a lot of deals. Like we've seen it – some deals where you go, man, I'm kind of surprised that guy only got this amount over this many years. And then a day later, you go, ah, it has two opt-outs right. so that it, he's getting a little less upside guaranteed. But if he's – stays healthy and plays well, he can opt out and basically just rip up the contract from his point of view. And I think from the Twins' perspective, that would be very scary uh, in a situation like this. But is that like preferable because- to the opposite? With the, uh, the opposite is uh, no opt-outs for the player, but also no trades for the – no trade clause for the for the team. Do you know what I mean? Like would you rather have you're Correa gonna come out – You're not going to be able to trade him – if he's bad anyway, he's making thirty five million dollars. Right, so so you're saying you would rather have you'd yeah. rather have the the Bryce Harper type. Well, deal first of all, then four a, years from now, Correa will have a no trade clause anyway if he's with the Twins. That's really good ten point. and five rule, but point. ten years in the majors, five with the same team. But so five years from now, four years from now. But he has to have be five. It has to be five years with your current team, not five years with the past team. I don't know if you know this, John, but he played for the Minnesota oh, no. Twins this season. <laughs> you may have noticed. Fair point. Fair point. All right. He, he was Sorry. always standing in the same spot in the Sorry. infield. It was very yeah, strange. Yeah. Okay. Um, I knew you were going there, so I just played dumb, which is very oh, easy man. for me to play, understandably. But good lord. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think sleep. I get what you're way. saying, which is yeah, it works both ways. But I, I think. Because it's a relatively new thing, the p- t- players pushing for opt outs is relatively new. At least at this, you know, this right. many occurrences of it each offseason. P- it, it takes a while for people to realize what the real kind of push and pull of it, what the real beneficiaries are of it. Right. And it's the player, obviously, which is fine. But I don't think people realize how much it removes upside for the team. Right. Because if you sign Carlos Correa or Xander Bogarts or whoever well, it is. They just kind of went through it with with yes. Correa, right? right. Like, like Which people kind of should have got a sense of that, if right? If you sign a pitcher to a five-year, $125 million deal and there's three opt-outs in it and he, you know, he breaks both his arms. Right. You're, you're stuck, stuck with it. Right. But if he wins a Cy Young award and is healthy, right. he's gone. Right. And so you're, it, it almost turns these contracts into theoretical contracts that you know in your heart can't play out fully unless it goes badly. And I think that would be the worst case scenario for the Twins, which is that, you know, they're out here, you know, in, in uncharted water for them. Right. You actually get them to sign it, which is by right. definition, you're paying whatever the, what's that called? The, uh, the bidder's curse or whatever it is. <laughs> right, you know, the winner's curse. Yeah, right? the winner's yeah, curse. Right. You, by, almost by definition, paid a premium or more than he's right. worth to secure him. And then you announce, oh, yeah, three years from now, he can just opt out and hit the open right. market if he's thriving and winning MVP awards and stuff. Right. And so that, to me, almost more than the years and the money would make me – I, I have no I, inside I, here's, information here's that I, he's pushing for that. I, I think – I assume he would. I, I would assume he would. Yeah. Boris but I mean, I mean, Bor- but, I mean, Boris negotiated the Bryce Harper contract, and Bryce Harper didn't right. have those options. But I do feel like – I remember Bryce Harper even at the time, which was, what, two off-seasons right. ago, right? He basically said, I just – I'm moving once. Right. Like, yeah. this is right. it for me. Right. Like, but I could see Correa having that attitude. It's just sure. like Correa is – yeah. Ready to settle down, for lack of a better Maybe. word. But that's the thing about the opt-outs. He can settle down if he wants. Well, that's true. Do you know what I mean? That's true. Like if Bryce that's Harper's true. deal was 13 years with, yeah, let's say, true. an opt-out every three years, that's true. he can settle down all he wants. He can know that he's staying there for all right. 13 years. It's right. the Phillies who can't settle yeah, down. that's true. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a, a factor with it. I, I, but I will say this. when I think when Falvey talks, and he's talked about this, yeah. says – 
Oh, uh, we, we are open to creative contracts. That has to be what he means. Exactly. Because otherwise, what does he exactly. mean? Exactly. Right? No, I agree. Which, which means I think, I think that we should expect all kinds of little op- and like if right. the twins end up going in, if they can, they can go in with a big number and try and keep them around, or they can go in with a. We're going to get a deal done at something less sure. than three hundred million dollars, at two fifty to three hundred million dollars. But we're going to be creative about whether there's opt outs. Yeah. Every or week like he can. That. It's like setting your fancy football lineup. He can decide <laughs> every Sunday night does he want to keep playing for the Twins or should he? I think for yeah. ten years, right? Every week for ten years, Carlos flips a coin, and if it lands on heads, he'll keep playing. For <laughs> yeah, but, the, but I think the problem ultimately for them is going to be it's going to require the money and that. Right. It's not an either or. Necessary. No, I mean, for that. listen. E- e- even with all of that, there's going to be a fair amount of money involved. Like, right? Yeah, you, you were talking maybe a eight year, like you said, eight years, two hundred fifty million dollars. Maybe you get to you start considering something like that if you've got an opt out starting in year two and you've got it yearly up until right. the, up until the, you know until the eight years are over or something right. like that. You know, otherwise, yeah. I mean, he, he's going to be looking for a Lindor contract, right? He's going to be looking for a. I mean, 10 that's year, the thing. The the problem three hundred twenty three is like yeah. You mentioned Lindor who just did that with the Mets, right? Which we were exactly just talking about, right? <laughs> right. And he, uh, you know, Francisco Lindor is an incredible player, and maybe at one point. Was better than Correa, right. but I think it's difficult to make the argument right now right. that he's better than Correa, or even when he signed the contract, because he's sort of—I don't want to say plateaued, because he's in, you know an MVP caliber player, certainly an All-Star player. It's a hell of a plateau, but he stopped sort of <laughs> ascending a right. little bit, and so if he's worth three hundred and whatever million over yeah. ten years, right? Yeah, but as we saw last season, that it doesn't necessarily always play out like that like right. you don't just go well i'm better than this guy who got this right. so i should get this plus 10 percent. right absolutely um so yeah i mean i think that's a factor but yes carlos correa has officially opted out the other before we move on to next stuff but the other moves that have officially now happened is um gary sanchez michael fulmer sandy leone aaron sanchez and then billy hamilton also <laughs> automatically became <laughs> front free agents about billy hamilton yeah, yeah. Um, so they're removed from the roster. And then yesterday, the Twins made official the team options, which we talked about, which was they picked up Sonny Gray's $12.5 million option, which is a no-brainer. Right. And then they declined the options on Miguel Sano, Dylan Bundy, and Chris Archer, which makes them free agents. You give them a buyout instead of their contracts. So now they're free agents. And then, obviously, Correa uh, opted out. Um, along with a bunch of prominent Bogarts opted out, DeGrom opted out, Rodon opted out. Like I would say half of the top 10 free agents were, are there because they opted right. out. I'm probably forgetting one or two. Similar. Yep, yep. This is the right. point of those this contracs is, that we just talked that's about. That's exactly right. So, a lot of coming 360. Before we – we're going to talk a little bit about shortstop. I just wanted to say real quick what the dates to know are. So right now are the general manager meetings in Las Vegas. Great. Dan Hayes is there. He wrote a thing about Correa actually today. Um, that's much more behind-the-scenes stuff where it's actually the team team – Officials talking to each other, not so much a media component. Like Dan is one, I think might be the only Minnesota reporter there just because Dan's nuts. Um, <laughs> and wanted, probably wanted to go to Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, uh, no, next week, all the awards start getting, uh, announced. Okay. November 14th, yeah, yeah, yeah. the work of that. I did, I voted be... for, uh, AL Cy Young, but they'll, day by day, they get announced. Which will be awarded at the Diamond Awards, uh, Twins Fest weekend on that Thursday night. We'll have information on tickets for that at some point. Yeah, but what's that have to do with the awards? The huh? BBWA Awards. There ain't going to be any twins mentioned in those. The BBWA – oh, you're talking – I'm sorry. You're talking about the the league ones. Yeah, I'm they sorry. already yeah, announced yeah, yeah. The, 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 uh, the twins ones already. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Sell yeah, Carlos yeah, Correa. Right, right. Yes, that's right. I yes. want to – will you put me next to him at the Diamond Awards? <laughs> we both have the same likelihood of being there. <laughs> uh, November 15th is the deadline for teams to add prospects to the to the 40-man roster to protect them from the Rule 5 draft. Right. And then the Rule 5 draft itself – Will take place December seventh in San Diego. I will be there. Okay. No one is excited about watching the Rule Five Draft in person except for me. I've seen three of them. This will be my fourth one. It's a just a giant conference room with a uh, thirty tables, three or four people at each table looking at a laptop, and then there's a guy up front who's the got the um, overhead projector. Basically, I'm assuming they've uh, modified this a little better, <laughs> but he's got a laptop that's projecting on the screen, and people literally just. Walk up there and hand in their pick, 
And they go Are like, you sure, uh, it's not going to happen via Zoom this year. <laughs> I'll be from the, from the individual hotel rooms. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> but that's uh, because the winter meetings are December fourth through seventh in San Diego. I'll be there for that whole Correct. week. Yep. Well, I'll probably we'll be doing at least one show probably yes. from there. Yep. Um, and then the other deadline to know for the Twins is uh, November eighteenth is the non tender deadline for arbitration <laughs> eligible players. The key one for the twins being Gio Urshela, but also, you know, Pagan and Maui and Arise and I don't know, they had 10 different players, something like that. That's the date at which you have to say, we're committing to keeping this player through the arbitration process or right. we're cutting him loose with Urshela. We're, pay- we're paying this player one way or the other. <laughs> or trading. <him. laughs> yeah, right, right. Somebody's right. paying this right. guy. Yeah, somebody's going to pay this guy. Right. right. And so Ur- Urshela is projected to make like 9.2. Nine million in in arbitration, so that's the day the twins have to decide: Do we want to keep him for that price? Right. Do we think we can keep him and trade him for that price? And if not, we cut him that before the eighteenth, or, or we trade him before that, right? right. Or we'll trade right. him right. before that. Right. So Pagan, same thing. So those are basically the dates to know. So there might be a there might be a significant move by the middle of yeah. December. I mean, that's a potential, but based yeah. just on that that particular deadline with Urshela. It yes. could be that they decide, listen, we can either – I mean, similar to what ed- happened to Eddie Rosario a couple of years ago, which is like, yeah. well, we couldn't find anybody to, to trade you to, so we're not going to offer you arbitration, and we're going to actually uh, ma- make you eligible for anybody else that wants to pick you up put for him, arbitration. Put him right on waivers. The right. Day before the, the deadline, and nobody right. claimed him. Yep. Then he won a World Series. Yes. <laughs> well, he was, what was he, he signed for about what he would have made in arbitration. A little less, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But he got that World Series money, so yep, that made up that's for right. it. That's yep. right. Uh, and now he – um. He's, has eye problems and he can't hit anymore. He was on the he yeah. resigned for like a two year deal. Yeah, I know he did. Um, and he was in the playoffs. He did. He made yeah. some appearances. Uh, before we talk shortstops and maybe each give an actual number that would okay. be our uh, cry uncle point with Carlos Correa. Right. Let's talk about our our last couple sponsors here. Better Help, which you've heard us talk about before. The idea behind Better Help is you can get therapy from real therapists. Right. In a much more convenient and timely way than you can at any point in human history before now, basically. Right, yeah. Uh, which is if you want to not go to an office and have to set this up and wait a month to go meet a therapist and that makes you nervous, you can just set up a video chat with a real therapist within you know 72 hours or whatever. And if you're one of those people who goes, uh, I don't even want to be on video. You can do a phone call. Right. And if you're one of those people like me who hates phone calls, you can just type your way to it in a live <laughs> chat. Right. Yeah. Like they set everything up to sort of fit what you think you want and what you're comfortable with. Um, you know, real therapists that can talk you through whatever you're, you're looking for, which I think is a great idea. I always point out that the biggest thing for me is removing the barrier for entry to therapy because so many people view it as just this undoable yeah. project that you got to make calls and you got to go see people in person. And it's just much easier, especially if you're not feeling great about yourself right. to just go, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. Right. Well, you can just do it. Or, much or you easier. don't want to talk to somebody. You don't want to say, right. Hey, how, who should I be talking to? Or you're with a, uh, maybe as a couples therapy thing. And you're like, oh, how yeah. do we, how do we, we find do that. like this together? You want to do that? You on you help? Couples therapy, couples you know? therapy? Yeah. Um, so you, to, uh, to learn more and save 10% off your first month, you can go to better, Help.com slash Gleeman. That's better help, H E L P dot com slash Gleeman. And then our last sponsor for the day is uh, Uncommon Goods. We, uh, I just got a shipment from them the other day. I did too. We, I ordered a, uh, I don't want to say who, but a present for one of our friends. <laughs> uh, and I ordered, uh, something for our cats, <laughs> which they do not appreciate. I ordered, I, I ordered a couple presents for Chrissy. I've given one to her already. I'm yeah. trying to decide if I save the other one for Christmas or if I, I just do a surprise present yeah. for her at some point when she. I bought could the, use a little the cats are obsessed with my laptop. Yeah, as I work on my yeah, laptop, yeah. they touch the screen because right. it's warm right. and it has. So I bought them a cardboard fake laptop, laptop? for cats. <laughs> yes, right. And I've heard like, this works. Yeah. They, they, one, want, they one is into it. One is like what? Well, maybe is, he wants his own laptop. Yeah. Well, we do that too. Do I have, have two laptops? old laptops that I've propped up. <laughs> anyway, this is the type you can get. Uncommon goods. They have a lot of good sports stuff. John's right. got a, a, a whiskey glasses that are the Target Field. Uh, they've got, they've uh, got a lot of good stuff personalized or for like, like a particular city. The, the, the thing just, I got for Chrissy is something that's Philadelphia. It's just based. very easy to find a gift for almost anybody. 
because they have tons of stuff, and you can search for keywords. You can search for cities or teams or whatever they're yeah, into. I got her a wine glass with the Philadelphia skyline on it. Yeah. Like, that's something that she's going to like. Right. Yeah, I so, hope, because right. she's got it tattooed on her arm. <laughs> I hope she likes it. Isn't that what she has tattooed She's on got her? the uh, Philadelphia boathouse, boathouse row okay. on her arm. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. To get 15% off your next gift. Go to uncommongoods.com slash Gleeman. That's uncommongoods.com slash Gleeman for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time on offer. Uncommon goods were all out of the ordinary. Okay. All right. Let's dive into some of this stuff. So the shortstop market, and then we'll maybe finish up with some thoughts on the departing uh, free agents and all sure. that stuff. But the shortstop market, I just ranked – the top 10 for the athletic, which I do every year. Okay. I have one today ranking the top 20 uh, starting pitchers, which we'll talk about next week probably. Okay. Um, so I ranked the top 10. You know that, The of top course. 10 shortstops? Short stops, okay. Short stops. All right. You know that, of course, because sure. you're a daily reader sure, of the sure, athletic, sure, sure, sure. and specifically all of my work. You never miss it. <laughs> um, I wish sometimes people could see my face when I'm saying things, because I worry my delivery is a little too dry, <laughs> and they think, boy, he's full of himself, <laughs> which is true, but in a, well, weird, sure, in a weirder sure, way yeah, than you might think. Right, right. Um, so I, uh, much like last offseason, I ranked Carlos Correa as the number one shortstop. Much like last offseason, I think there is certainly a case to be made for Trey Turner being the number one shortstop. Last offseason, I thought it was a 1A and 1B kind of situation between right. – Carlos Correa and Corey Seager, who right. ended up getting, uh, what, 10 years, 320 million or something, something like, that, like that from the Rangers. Um, but it's also similar to last offseason where you had Correa and Seager last offseason, but then you had, you know, Javi Baez and Trevor Story and on and on and Marcus Simeon too. This year you have four, what I would call like in their prime all star shortstops, you know, under 30 or 30 and under. Yeah, recently all stars in most cases, multi time all stars or MVP right. type of guys. Um, so it's Correa leaving the Twins, Trey Turner leaving the Dodgers, Dodgers. Uh, Xander Bogarts leaving the Red Sox by opting out. Right. He had like three years left on his deal, but he opted out. And then Dansby Swanson leaving the Atlanta Braves. The drop off after that is pretty <laughs> steep. And I would joke more about Shoot. the size of the drop off. Except that's probably going to become relevant to the Twins in about three months, right. that drop-off. But right. the drop-off after that, you know, you're getting into the fifth best guy I ranked as Elvis Andrews. Andrews. Right. Sixth, I had Jose Iglesias. Uh, those are not, you know, bad players. Those are lower-end, you know, starting shortstops. They're, they're among the sure. 30 best shortstops. But, you know, they're in the 20 to 30 range, basically, right. or the 25 to 30 range. And more than that. What do you think Andrews gets as a contract, just in comparison to I what? I mean, one these, year, $8 million, $10 million, Yeah, like it's going to be a one. It's not gonna, it may not even be a multi-year Well, and that's deal. the biggest right. thing is, like, obviously the, the, the value of those players or the upside of those players or just the talent level of those players are much less than Correa, I mean, the top four. But it's also that the commitment or the investment required in them. I mean, Elvis Andrews is 35. Right. He's not going to get, I mean, if he gets a two year deal, he's probably going to sign it. I mean, he's not going to get <laughs> right. a four year deal. Iglesias, same thing. Iglesias was a free agent last off season. Right. And I think got like a $5 million deal from the Rockies. Yeah. But um, there, there is no, there is no middle tier. There is no, um, right. There is top tier between those top four. I mean, yeah, you, you, you can, you can, Splice it a little bit amongst the sure. top tier as to, you know, Danzaby Swanson and Xander Bogarts versus Correa and Turner, right? right? But there is nobody who's going to get a three year deal on this, on this short stop market. There's nobody so. who's going to get a four year deal on right. the short stop market. It's either going to be, it's going to be a six year deal or it's going to be a one year deal. Right. It's going right. to be a hundred million dollar plus <laughs> right. for the top four and then eight million dollars for the right. next guys. Yeah. There's nobody, probably. There, there might not be anybody who gets a double, like a double digit deal. You know, anything That's between 10 and 99, That's an interesting bet. right? <laughs> right? It's, it's all going to be 100 million. It's going to be either nine figures right. or it's going to be <laughs> seven figures or nine figures. <laughs> right. No eight figures. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. That's an interesting little bet. Yeah. I think you're, well, you're probably right. I mean, look, all it takes is someone given, uh, sure. Andrew's 212. Right. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, exactly right. Screws yeah. up right. your bet. That's, That's right. interesting. Maybe if I'm in Vegas, I'll try to have <laughs> try them to put find that some on the board on at uh, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I have a very specific line I need made. <laughs> oh, okay. How much are you willing to bet? A million dollars? I was looking to put 25 bucks down on it. Can you Maybe guess? Goldstein be willing to make a bet for the end of the lake. Didn't you yeah. know who you had the, uh, the uh, bet with on? Um, no. 
It was uh, John Manuel. Oh, that was John who Manuel. Who also works for the <laughs> right. Twins. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's why I got mixed up. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, John yeah, yeah, that's right. That's why I got mixed up. Right. Yeah. All the old uh, prospect writers work mm-hmm. for the Twins. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, and then after you get past those guys. You have uh, your old friend Didi Gregorius, who Twins fans yeah. may remember from being right. terrorized by him in the playoffs with the Yankees. <laughs> right. But he's really struggled and was released actually yeah. a couple months ago by the Phillies. Yeah, he didn't even make the playoff roster. Right, right? Um, and he was another one of their big free agent signings. Yeah, you know, I yeah, mean, two years, twenty eight. They, they've had some big free agent signings that did not work out. Yes. <laughs> that was um, one of them. Right. And then you know, Angelton Simmons, which the Twins saw plenty right. of yeah. uh, two years ago. Um, is he your number eight guy nine. on the roster? Alidmi's uh, Diaz, who is a utility guy for the Astros, I put oh, eighth. Boy. And then number 10 is uh, Jonathan, Jonathan uh, Villar, who is, I would not play at shortstop. Yeah, I mean, it dries up. But that's the funny thing is, like, I saw people in the comments were like, this is really a bad sh-. I think last year kind of spoiled people. It was the greatest shortstop <laughs> class of all time. This is probably the, the second, second greatest. Best, <laughs> right, right. I looked back, like, a lot of years, including – Three years ago, or two off seasons ago, right. when the Twins signed Angelton Simmons, it was Simeon, Simmons, and Gregorius, and that was it. And at the time, obviously, those two of those three, Simmons and Gregorius, looked right. a lot better than they do now, obviously, and Simeon too. But uh, most free agent classes over the last fifteen years, let's say, right. have like three starting caliber shortstops <laughs> right, right. one of whom is like a borderline all-star and that's like a decent class there are some free agent classes like we're seeing it with catchers right now wilson Contreras is really good right and then the second best catcher is like a borderline starter right uh whoever you know you think it is right and that's also true of center field of shortstop a lot of the time because there's just positional scarcity uh with those guys and teams until the last couple of years, have been really hesitant to let those type of guys get to the open market. I mean, if you have a young star shortstop, you're making every effort you can before they even near free agency to give them signed to a long-term deal. It's a terrible shortstop market if you're a team like the Twins. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because if, if, if the, the Twins are exactly in the wrong position for this. They've got two or three guys that they think, well, probably one or two guys, that they think could be a long-term answer right. at shortstop. But they need like another year or two, so it'd be a great year to go find a good one year fill in or a yeah. or a good two to four year fill in you know or, or two to four year somebody you can turn it over to for get some solid production out of something the one year right. fill in there's a couple options for that it's not that horrible I mean it's not exciting Elvis I mean, Andrews and, and, and Jose are going to bat eight I or guess. nine in your lineup yeah. I mean I think the thing that is somewhat appealing about them I mean obviously if they let Correa if Correa signs elsewhere and they replace Carlos Correa with Elvis Andrews, people are going to be very upset by that. Right. Uh, and rightfully so. Right. But – I mean, that's a drop-off. <laughs> yes. But the the one benefit to like Elvis Andrews or Jose Iglesias is they are in that like kind of sweet spot where they're good enough – like I said, they're low end starting shortstops, assuming they don't right. age incredibly quickly, although at their age, that's, that's a risk. Right. But – they're good enough to start 140 games for you and play the full season and be decent, you know, one or two wins above replacement, something like that, hit you 250, play at the bottom of the lineup, play good defense, whatever. But they're not good enough that it would keep you if Royce Lewis were healthy and thriving at AAA, coming, you know, midseason coming back from the torn ACL or Brooks Lee was at looking good defensively and had gotten to double yeah. A or triple A or Austin Martin or whatever. They're not good enough, especially given that they're likely to be on one year deals. There's nothing stopping you from pushing them aside, either do a utility role or a trade or just cutting them in July if one right. of your prospects is ready. That's true. So it's not a, it doesn't need to be a complicated situation. Like if you whiff on Correa and you whiff on Xander Bogarts, right. you ju- you can either obviously make a trade or you can just say, we'll just give eight million bucks to Jose Iglesias and right. that's not going to be great, but we'll try to spend that money yeah. somewhere else. And I presume that is in fact the plan. The plan is I mean, either, I th- either play big. Right, right, with the money that they've got. Go big or go home. Those are going uh, home. Go big. Uh, I mean, that, that's... <laughs> Let's go home. Let's go... That's, use the safety net. We've, they've got two safety right. nets. And in fact, I, I'll be kind of interested to see, like, one of the things that today I was asked by Sauce, uh, hey, when do the free agents start signing? And my answer was, well, there's usually about four or five that sign in mid-November, like or just before yeah. Thanksgiving, because they're all the ones that we well, take a look at and go... was wacky. No, though. last year was wacky. No, but I say, 
almost every other year, it's sort of like we take a look at that free agent market. We go, here's the three guys that we kind of like. Like we like uh, who's the who's the guy who. Uh, End up with Hugh, Morton's Morton Charlie yeah. Morton, right? That's the kind of guy like maybe a little underrated, and almost uh, invariably, about half of those guys end up signing really early. I wouldn't be shocked, and, and it, it's sort of like we'll, we'll, a team just says we'll grab that guy. He's not the top of the market, but right. he's good enough, and we'll get it done early. And that way, when the market dries up, we we Which do that. Terry Ryan often did. That right, was Terry Ryan's Ryan approach well. almost every year. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing that happen to either Iglesias or Andrews. Yeah. That one of those guys ends up signing before Thanksgiving because some team's going to go like, we're not getting involved with the $100 sure. million dollar deal. And frankly, I wouldn't be totally shocked if it's the Twins that end up doing it. But. Right. Uh, in terms of the top of the market, you know, you have Correa, who I think, you know, here's – even for people who might think Trey Turner is at or better than Correa, at the same level or better than Correa, which I think is sort of reasonable. I think Correa will age better than Trey Turner, but Trey Turner is an amazing player. Um, I think, you know, the odds of the Twins giving 200 and something <laughs> well, million right. dollars to a shortstop and it not being the guy who just played the last eight months with right, them right. is nil. I mean, there's no shot of that. I mean, I think it's not. It's not like they're going to go. Well, we'll make the same offer to Correa and Turner. Uh, right. You know, I'll just I'll just be shocked by that. And I think you know Trey Turner. I'm not saying he's like a bad person or anything. Or sure, but you know, part of the draw of Correa is that they saw firsthand, and that's what Dan's article today was a lot about talking to you know other players and coaches about what he did behind the scenes. And you know, if you're giving two hundred and something million or three hundred something million to a player. You need them to be a lot of things, one of which is valuable off the field, both as a marketing component, as a leadership component, right. as just a, is this guy going to make us regret you don't a 10 year do, marriage right. to him? You don't want any headaches when, you, when you're right. committing that kind of money. And look, I'm right. not saying you know, who knows what I, I don't know, Carlos. We're not buddies or anything, but certainly right. everything anybody has ever said about him. You would be shocked if anything off the field came up with him that was, right. you know. And the Twins have signed free agents with for big money that they did end up feeling was a bit of a headache. Yes, right. Yeah, you don't. You don't want. You don't want. <laughs> you don't want <laughs> nice hey, buddy. Chuckle there, by the hey, way. Hey, buddy. He's a big listener. <laughs> I mean, the, you, you. By definition, that person is a leader. And so yes. when when you want somebody so, who and if if that leader is leading in the wrong direction, right. that, then things yes. become a real problem. It's not just it's not just their problem. Yeah, it's, we view it's leadership. A problem across, it's, it's, it's funny in sports. We view leadership as almost a positive word, but it's not necessarily a positive word. <laughs> right, right. That just implies a a, a, str a an ability to pull things towards you or to be at the right. top. Right. But it can go both ways. I mean, you can be a bad leader and take teams the wrong way, right. and you can be a good leader and you can be. You know, someone who's sort of neutral. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, Correa is a guy who, if you sign, whatever team he signs with, he will be the number one person in that clubhouse for right. the entirety of his deal. Right. And he will be the guy that reporters come to after tough losses. And he will be the guy who talks up young players. Yep. And he will be, you know, that, all that stuff. And, and he's going to be he, the guy that's expected to perform. Well, yeah, that's, right. that's, I mean, that's the main thing is health and performance. But I think he not only is, excellent at all those things but i think he relishes that and right. i think he views that as part of what he brings to a team and so right. not, that's not to say trey turner can't do all those things i just right. don't know <laughs> yeah, right, trey right. turner that well but yeah that my thing is like if you're gonna make this sort of deal which i'm extraordinarily skeptical that the twins will you know finish top three for Korea, I've in fact uh, attempted to place wagers with other writers, <laughs> but that's, I mean, it's a subjective thing, I guess. Yeah, it's a, you never know all the different offers he got. But, uh, you know, if you're going to make that sort of deal, you, if you're the twins, you sort of need those intangible or margins things to also be pushing in the right direction. You can't afford, I mean, they saw it happen, like you said, with Donaldson or some other players, which if you're going to give Carlos Correa $250 million for a decade, you need to feel confident that a he's going to be healthy and he's going to be an all star type of player most years, right. which is first and foremost. But you also want to be confident that 
you're going to like having him as the number right. one slot on the roster for that entire right. time, like on and off the field. And so I think – I mean, I can't think of a – The $30 million a year you might be paying him is headache enough for those 12 years. Right. You don't need to have also have headaches that you just can't deal with any other way because right. he's the he's the most expensive guy in the room. And if yes. he's, you know – Telling people, you know, telling the you know fourteenth guy on the roster, "Hey, you suck!" Right, all the time, and the whole, everybody's rolling their eyes and just like, "God, we don't even want him here." That's a that's a drag. Even if the fourteenth guy, he's really terrible. This fourteenth guy <laughs> is the worst. Uh, yeah, I think Cray is the opposite of all those. And I mean, I think if you're you know sort of face of the franchise idea. He's ideally suited well, for that. Well, that's true, too. You know, right. I mean, I'm not saying if I had to draft players for the next 10 years, he would be number one or even number five. Right. He would certainly be in the top 10 to 15. And I think among the top 15, he's going to be in the top five in terms of just do you, do you feel comfortable with him as the marquee guy for that entire right. time? Right. So, you know, maybe that doesn't matter that much. Maybe that matters up to a point. And really, once you get into the 200 and something million dollar range, it's like, well, who you know? Right. How many guys are getting two hundred and fifty million that just suck as people? Right. Now there are probably a few examples. Of that, but man, <laughs> right. I, I mean, I, I do think it's it's tough because I mean, you look, you know, guy like Lindor, guy like Max Scherzer, these are the big contracts that have, you know, Bryce Harper, Manny right. Machado. Now yep. they don't have the best reputations necessarily. Although I think this, the idea with Bryce Harper, I had a couple people who were like casual baseball fans watching the World Series and stuff, saying like. Isn't Bryce Harper like a big jerk? And I'm like, <laughs> right. no, not really. Yeah. He right. got a bunch of shit when he was 19, the same way LeBron James got. Right. And it's he's not quite at that level, but I he's going to be an inner circle Hall of Famer. And people just assume that those guys are brats and right. that they're overhyped. And there's a like a jealousy component or a rooting for failure component. Right. I get that. Right. But, I mean, Bryce Harper has two MVPs already. He's led – uh the Phillies, who no one expected to the World Series, he's right. been great, by the way, in the yeah, playoffs right, during yeah. his career. Very clutch. Um, right. He's an incredible player, and people are just like, yeah, but, you know, eight years ago, he had some weird quote. <laughs> eight years ago, he was 20 years old. Like, what right. are we? Um, so, yeah, I think that's obviously the biggest factor with Correa. To me, and I wrote about this the other day, but to me, I do think they should be pushing very hard to sign Correa. Uh, I don't think they will sign Correa, but, you know, I think they should be. And I think if they can't sign Correa, they should be pivoting to make a push for, in my mind, Bogarts is the best yeah. fit. Yeah. Because Bogarts, to me, is a Correa-level hitter. He's not quite as good defensively. In past years, he hasn't been great defensively. He's also 30 instead of 28. But I think there's some notion that he might be gettable for a five- or six-year deal yeah. instead of an eight- to ten-year deal. And... In that scenario, you play him at shortstop for this year and maybe next year, depending on what Royce Lewis's situation and Brooks Lee, and then he just slides to, to third base. He seems like the right mix of affordability, which is primarily like I don't want to underplay. I don't want to underplay that. Like not not. I don't think not he's not a be that contract. No, but, but, but per year. Well, I'm not saying he's going to get 140 million dollars. I'm saying he's going to get. You know, I, I, I'm just saying he's not going to get $300 million. Yes, you know what I, I mean? Like, like he's a little bit more into that, yeah. into the right price range. He's got the bat that you're hoping for. And the thing that we have most questions about his defensive ability is the feel, thing that the twins feel like they've got the best chance of handling here in the future. Like that's, that's right. sort of, the, I think that's the argument. Like that's basically, he's got the right mix of those three things to be able to kind of, right. Lift him above. And I mean, who knows? Other we assume that, above Zayt Swanson. We assume that because he's thirty, but somebody might offer him an eight-year deal. You don't know, right? In yeah. which case, right. I'm not right. touching that with a ten-foot pole, obviously. And then Swanson is interesting because he's twenty-eight. Right. He just won Gold Glove. Right. He's definitely an elite defensive player. Has been for his entire career. But he was a number one overall pick, and for the first three or four years, was kind of underwhelming. Then the last, basically the the 2020 abbreviated season, he had a kind of a breakthrough. Then two years ago, he hit 20-something homers. And then this year, he put it all together and was, this was his first year kind of hitting at an all-star level. Right. Even within that, he, I think his OPS plus was like 118 or something like that. 115, Where, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Correa was 140, and Bogarts has been above 125 each right. of the past five years. And, right. you know, Turner's at 130 something. So he's not the hitter that those guys are. Well, he's only hit an OPS 
over 100 twice. Twice, yeah. right, right. But last year, relatively young. Ago, right. He's got 20 homer power. Uh, the strikeout rate would scare me a little bit because he's not a guy who walks a whole lot. Um, but he's legit defensive. I mean, he's a great defensive shortstop. And so I'm guess, I'm assuming his annual value will be the fourth highest of those four. I presume. But also, I'm also assuming he's going to get two or three more years than Bogarts Bogart, because he's two years younger than Bogarts. You know what I mean? Now, if those assumptions aren't true, then all this stuff is you know thrown into the air. Yeah, but I mean, I said that I I don't know if any of those guys will get less than a hundred million dollars. They definitely won't. I mean, I mean we just saw closer yeah, get a hundred five yeah, million. Well, that's true. Yeah, I'm trying to. No, think. I I would be surprised uh, if uh, any of them got less than a hundred and twenty five or even fifty million. Yeah. And that's why I'm kind of trying to come up. I'm trying to come up with where Bogart's number comes down. Like if Bogart comes, I'm, my guess is six at twenty two, twenty three per something like that. That gives me to one thirty, one forty, something like that. I mean, Dan's be about that. You think that's I would, low? I would sign him to that. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is we were talking about this before the podcast started. I've become. Uh, I'm always old man Gleeman, but I've really become Grandpa <laughs> Gleeman. And like, I look at prices now because I'm going to Vegas. We just booked a trip to Vegas in a, in a couple of weeks. And I look at the prices and I'm just like, my brain can't handle them. <laughs> and even like, I go out to a restaurant right. and I order a. Because you remember what it was like going to Vegas 10 years ago. Right. right. But in my mind, right. it was last year. You right. know what I mean? Exactly. Like, right. And yeah. so. And I realize things have been sort of uh, put on a fast track in terms of price sure, increases the sure, last year or two. Sure. But. Like I order a burger at some restaurant and it's like, you know, twenty two bucks, and I'm right. like, oh, well, okay. I mean, I'm gonna buy it. It was a good burger, <laughs> but in my head, I'm just like obsessed with. And I think it's the same thing with like, free agent. This happens like, to be every year at the free agency right. market. I'm like, but I think this year especially because this year is the first clean year right. in a while because last year was the lockout right. which screwed everything up. The two years before that were COVID affected right. directly, yeah. and so. The, like when you go like yeah six years uh, you know twenty four million dollars a year for Bogarts, I think in my head, I go that's a lot of money, like for the last, uh you know nineteen of the last twenty years when we've been covering this stuff, that's a really a lot of money for a good right. but not great player, and then I think, oh, of course he's gonna get more than that. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, that yeah. much money. I mean it's similar to what we talked about with the Buxton contract, which is people look at the Buxton contract and they go well, he's got to stay healthy. He's making fifteen million dollars a year. It's like, yes, $15 million a year is not one of the 100 highest salaries. Yeah. So to me, I think all those guys are going to get over $25 million a year, okay. including Swanson. Okay. Um, I'd love to be wrong because if I'm wrong, that probably means the Twins have a better chance. But I think Bogarts is five or six years at, at 28 yeah, to $30 right. million dollars a six, year. One, 625 and it gets you to 150 That's right. about right to me. But right. yeah. Swanson, I could see – yeah, I could see like seven twenty two for him, and yeah, then that's one fifty four. I mean, I also, I, I truly will not be surprised if this year's market shocks people. It just goes crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, but you know that'd be bad for the Twins, obviously. Right. But uh, yeah, I won't be surprised by that. I talked to a few people with some other teams and stuff, and I'm like, just give me a, a baseline for Rodon or a baseline for DeGrant. Somebody told me, a guy I absolutely trust who's been in a front office for almost a decade now that I know um, with a non-Twins team said he thinks DeGrant might get like $45, $50 million a year on like a three-year deal. Like, And yeah, so we right. all, we just saw Diaz get $105 million, right. biggest deal ever. And so part of me is like, are we... Are we being naive to right. think that right. with someone like Correa, that like eight two fifty even gets you like a call back from Scott Boris at that right. point? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but I don't know. It's 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 very tough to predict. I do think if that's the case, that the Twins just have no chance of of competing. I mean, I think they're under ten percent to sign them anyway. Right. Five percent. Uh. Well. So that would be my approach. My approach would be I'm trying to sign Carlos Correa. Up to and including, I don't know, eight years, two hundred fifty million. Anything beyond that, I'm gonna have to really think twice. And about but it. then you're going to include all of the opt outs and stuff like. I, mean, you, I would certainly. There, there's, be no, there's no way that's competitive if there aren't. Right. I agree. Um, right? You you got to you got to include you yeah. got to be to quote Derek Falvey, you've got to be creative. I'm not that creative about that. You know that about me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I I would be open to that if that is going to get it done. But I'm not putting in an opt out. 
you know, three opt-outs in an eight-year deal, I think that is just self-sabotaging yourself. It's just removing all of the upside and placing all of the downside onto the team. And for a team like the Twins, I don't think they can afford that. And I, I think you're right that that probably will mean you're sort of disqualifying yourself um, from that. But I think realistically, you know, here's what I've been telling people all season. What we've been telling people all season is let's say the Twins are willing to spend whatever. Right. In what universe is whatever the highest possible amount the Twins feel comfortable spending? In what universe does one of the 29 other teams not sp- be willing to spend more? Right. Why would it be the case that the Minnesota Twins are willing to spend a dollar more than anybody else is willing to spend? And I just think that's extraordinarily unlikely. In which case, I would, I would make the best, I would try to do it early, although Boris is notoriously not likely to do that, but yeah. I would certainly try to at least if not get him signed early, it really, at least figure out early that you're not actually in the mix. Right. Because the worst thing they can do is spend four months thinking right. they got a shot and then finish fifth for the guy. Right. And then by the time that happens... Right. Glaciers and edges are long yeah, gone. Or, or right. whoever's That's gone. The rest of them are too. Right. right. Or pitchers are gone. I mean, you can't even really pivot. So I would certainly be trying to go after Correa if, if and when you can't get Correa at a price point you feel at all comfortable with. I would try for Bogarts on a... Sh- you know five-year deal, let's say, six-year deal. And I would be somewhat open to Dansby Swanson if he finds his market. He's not being blown away by anybody. I'm certainly not trying to pay Then you're waiting on the Swanson market until... Well, right, because he's going to want to wait. Listen, I think what what is most likely to happen is sort of what you're talking about here, right, which is, you know... They're going to wait out the market. They're going to hope that Dan Swanson doesn't get the suitors that they hope that he would get, and they end up, right? You know, trying to bring him in at what is still a reasonable contract, but it's a you know six year, hundred and forty million dollar right. deal, six year, you know, because he's he's sitting there waiting for an eight year deal, right. or something like that. Yeah, you know, that's my approach, um, and I don't think any of those things are individually likely. Um, so yeah, you, or, or you better they, be ready or, for or they, Andrews. Or they move fast and they just say, you know what, right. we're we're not going to be playing. We, we've we've got enough sense of who's going. The Giants are in, the Orioles right. are I mean, in. We've got you know that's the Yankees are out, but the Dodgers they need to replace Turner. Blah blah blah. If you know? they hadn't gotten Correa last year, would we even be having this type of conversation about the top high level free agent shortstops? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's still the Twins. Like it's open this as a possibility, obviously, but we still you still have to I be. Mean, we did talk last year about whether or not they would end up. You know, end up being the chair left standing. Right. <laughs> you know when when uh, when these guys were were walking around and they'd end up with one of them, and you know that's the way it ended up. We didn't anticipate it. We thought we we didn't think it was going to be at the Correa level, but we were talking about Trevor Story pretty much the right. entire off season as one of those options, right. right? So, so yeah, I think talking about something like Swanson or Bogarts makes sense, right? Um, if I was going to, I I think if I want Correa back, I and I. You know, I guess the sense is sort of like, I, I guess I get the question is, which kind of contract does he want? Does he want a, we're both just going to commit to each other long term contract, right. or are we, are we, are you, do you want a bunch of opt outs? If, if it's the opt out contract, you know, maybe 9270, something like that, right? If it's, yeah. I mean, that might be a little too much, but whatever. And maybe, maybe a, a con- an opt out every three years, something like that. Right. I mean, the the truth is, is when is he going to want to opt out of his contract? He's going to want to opt out of his contract at thirty or thirty two. He's not going to want to opt out of the contract at thirty six. He's not going to be that productive at right. thirty six that he's going to care about it, right? The opt outs are is about when, how soon can he opt out of that contract? Look, not, if he wants to opt out, out of his contract at thirty five, that means the Twins are probably pretty happy about how the first <laughs> well, six yeah, years exactly right. of yeah, the that, deal was. Yeah, I mean, he can have as many opt outs on the back end as he wants on that contract. Yeah. I don't care about that. It's about how many opt outs he has at the beginning. John, of the I'll give you I the ability it. to quit the podcast when you're 80. <laughs> right, exactly. John you know, at 80 is going to be like, I'll right. take the money. Yeah, you can, uh, have, you can, you, you can opt out, uh, yeah, 36, 37, or 38. You just let us know right. which one, right? If he wants, you know, the commitment one, he says, no, I'm going to I'm going right. to do it, and I'm willing to get rid of the opt-outs uh, if, if you're willing to commit to the no trade aspect right. of it, you know, which I think is – you know the minimal that both no, sides Once they really gave do. the no trade to Bucks, then they have no ground to stand on not giving no trades to right. to Korea. Well, right? I mean, I the, mean the, the number that you have to beat, like the the Lindor number, is three forty one something yeah. like that. Now, 50, Corey Seager 50, was no, three twenty or whatever. Fifty million of that was delayed. 
you know, or, or you know, it was uh, deferred. deferred. I'm sorry, deferred, right? Yeah. So it's not really worth that much. But I bet he's looking for three fifty, yeah. and and I think that's what Boris is looking for. And, and then you've got to decide: Am I willing to go? Well, I mean, let's be honest. There's a zero percent chance the Twins are giving out a three hundred three hundred million dollar contract. Then it's a right. I mean, I, uh, pull this clip and no, no, no. Put me in the <laughs> old takes exposed. I'd exactly. be glad if, to, you're, t- if you're asking, zero if you're asking me what I. I decide I right. want Korea and what I'm willing to pay. And the answer is, yeah, I don't think an 11 year, $32 million a year contract gets me to 352, right? Especially if I can defer some Jesus. of that money, which, you know, which years. they did. 11 years, I'll be 50. Yeah. Can you imagine me at 50? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah well, I mean, there is an element, but, there's but, an effort uh, element, right? So once you get to eight, 250, and nine, 280, well, what's I don't, the difference? I, here's the thing. I don't, if, if I'm, if I'm asking for the, the, you know, non opt outs and all that other stuff. I don't know why I'm pl- even talking about eight two fifty because it's not going to happen. Like, it, it, like I said, that's a good fourth yeah. place offer. I mean, we don't know. Though. I mean, we, <laughs> you know? we, yeah. I mean, the, the lockout changed everything. But I mean, he didn't get that last off season. Uh, um, okay, before we finish up, just a few notes on some of the guys who left. What, what did he? Do you remember? Do we know what he? Sorry, do, I know you were moving, but do we know what he turned down from Detroit? No, but it was like two hundred and something. It wasn't three hundred. No. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't think. Um, but also, he fired his agent. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Wasn't real happy with how right. that went. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, if he wants to take two hundred twenty-five million, I'll sign him today. Me personally, <laughs> right. I'll sign him today. Right. I'll yeah. handle that bank. I'll note. figure it out. <laughs> yeah, we might have to do a few more Patreon episodes. But <laughs> that'll be funny, Carlos. Uh, I'll give you two hundred twenty-five million. The problem's going to be you have to be a guest on what's called the Patreon podcast uh, three times a day. <laughs> For the entire life of the contract, like that would pay for it. It's funny that I think that's the same scale. He could do one in every hour, and I, it wouldn't pay for it. Yeah, that's gonna be tricky to pull off. Anyway, we'll, we'll brainstorm. Um, so, guys, leaving obviously, uh, you know, I don't know. Gary Sanchez to me was disappointing. Uh, he wasn't terrible, but I thought the one thing you could at least sort of count on with Sanchez. Was you know he's going to pop twenty homers. He might hit two ten. He's going to strike out too much. The defense wasn't going to be pretty. But I thought the guy will hit twenty four, twenty five, twenty eight right. homers, something like that. Instead, he you got the two ten batting average or whatever. You got the strikeouts, and he hit like I don't know twelve homers right. or something like that. Um, he came through in some spots, but he, he you know he wasn't a plus offensively, especially given early in the season they were playing him at DH a lot. He was batting in the middle of the lineup a lot. Right. He was, I think, less bad. I was going to say better, but I'll phrase it less bad than expected defensively. I don't think he was like a disaster yeah. defensively. I think he has a relatively okay arm. I think he his framing they were able to improve with some you know stylistic changes. But I also just think he's very limited in terms of like side to side reactions and movement. There's just a lot of balls that bounce to the backstop with him that shouldn't, whether it's his fault or the pitcher's fault. He's just not someone I would want to start regularly at catcher. And I certainly got the sense that the, the pitchers didn't dislike throwing to him, but they liked throwing to Jeffers. And then when Leon showed up, they love throwing to Leon, which tells you, right. you know, it's relative to Sanchez basically. So I don't know. I mean, I think. On a one year, $3 million deal, if he wants to come back and split time with Jeffers again. Gets? I'm, he's, I, he I really be, don't he know. He could be the second or third best catcher on the market at this yes, point. Yes. Right? Or if every team views him as a DH, he might not even <laughs> right. be a catcher. Right. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I honestly. I he gets a one year, $6 million. That's kind seven, of my assumption. Mean, he's dollars? still young. Right. I just, and, I don't and, know and how and you. For can him, f- it's a make good deal. See what he happens. Do we right. find the power stroke again? Think I think his name is so far above what his actual upside is at this point. For sure, it's been so long since he was like an actual good player, right. and that's hard. When you're great at 22, 23, 24, right. especially for the Yankees, that never kind of totally goes away. Right. But he's just you know he hits two ten. He's well, got on the some one power. hand that hurts him, but on the other hand you can totally see a GM going. Sure, this is an easy one. Like I'll, I'll, yeah, I mean I sure as hell wouldn't sign him to a multi-year deal I, I mean i wouldn't be shocked if he got i don't a minor know the, league I don't, deal. i'm not sure that he wants to sign like he might want to he might believe hey, he I might can, think he can, wants that but this time next year he might be yeah you're right yeah you're right playing it's, for it's the, a tough call i was gonna say for the saints but that <laughs> doesn't even work anymore for the whatever <laughs> right um michael fulmer yeah i would certainly try to resign i yeah. thought he was a good fit sure. seemed well liked i think they need right-handed relievers 
I think you'd like him to be a little more uh, competent against lefties, but he just annihilates righties with that uh, fastball slider or sinker slider. He's a good fit. I thought He'd he be was, a good fit. He was durable. Yeah, uh, I think there's a lot of guys like him that are good. Yeah, fit, that's so the thing. I, it's not one of the things like, oh, he's a priority are, to bring back. There but. are kind of like ten guys like him who are just competent seventh inning setup guys. Right. And if he wants like a two year, twelve or fourteen million dollar deal, something like that. Again, we're going, do that. we're doing inflation prices here because we're yeah. just assuming. But I think, yeah, great. If he's going to get a three year, twenty something million dollar deal, I'll move on. Yeah. But I think of all their free agents, which they had five. Um, he would be the one I would be in contact with trying to sign. I think they would like to bring Sandy Leon back, but I think they would like to bring him back as the Saints catcher, the third catcher. Right. Um, you know, he's not a guy you want to play more than once or twice a week. Great dude, but, he's I mean, like a coach the, on the but field. The, but, but the truth is, is that I that might be end up where he ends up anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, I, he was on a minor league deal when they right. got him. So, yeah. Um, I mean, they might think higher than him of him than a lot of other teams do. Maybe uh, right. than thirty-one other teams do. Uh, you know? And the left-handed bat is, in fact, you know, a nice fit here. Like, you know, well, I mean, I mean, he does hold a bat with his left. <laughs> I was going to say, I was say. <laughs> you know, I could do that. <laughs> I tried to switch hit. Gary Sanchez could do that. For a couple months when I was like 12, (laughs) my uncle tried to teach me because my uncle can hit lefty, right? My uncle was like a good baseball player and he tried to hit, teach me how to hit left handed Uh, because he was like, this is going to really help you. There'll be no bad matchups for you. And I didn't want to tell him they're all bad matchups. (laughs) I'm terrible. Um, So we talked about Correa. Obviously, Sonny Gray's coming back. Archer and Bundy were no brainers to decline. They were both over $10 million options. to me, Archer was one of the bigger disappointments of this season. Not that he didn't pitch okay, but that he never got physically able to yeah. go more than like four innings. They yeah. really thought, yeah. we'll bring him along slowly, and then eventually he'll go five, he'll go six, he'll be a normal starter. I wonder if he gets a contract, a major league contract See, I, this year. I mean, he to me, if he were able on to... On the one hand, he bounced back a little bit compared to previous years, but on the other hand, I think right. it also became more clear than ever, like... That hip is just an issue. Right. His hip like, is screwed. Yeah. At some point, uh, you just. And the problem is, you know, he would be an ideal transition to relief. He's got uh, a that's true. 94, 95 mile an hour fastball and a great slider. And his other, his control is shaky. Right. His health is shaky. His uh, off speed stuff shaky. Yeah, but if point. you come him in, but the problem is, I don't know that his hip is going to allow him to pitch four times a week and warm up in 10 minutes. And right. I mean, the stuff he had to go through right. to pitch every fifth day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't see the Twins bringing him back. You know, Bundy, I didn't have high hopes for Bundy. Neither of us had high hopes for Bundy. We kind of looked at it as like a shrug when they signed him. Right. Um, I, I enjoyed him as a person. He's very yeah. uh, sarcastic, and, dry, I mean, he, fun listen, person. And they, God knows they needed him. I right. mean, they, they needed just, the innings. Right. I mean, that's true of Archer, too. Right. They needed But Bundy, he just showed such little stuff. Right. Like, it was just... I mean, he's only like 30, but he, he looked like, you know, Jamie Moyer. Like, yeah. it was just 87, 88 yeah. with the fastball, bunch of slop. Now he can command three or four off speed pitches, so that's good. Um, he's just toughing his way through a season. He's right. a veteran pitcher Basically, trying to tough yeah. his way through Which I give season. him credit for. I mean, I think we had it ranked something like 20, 21st or something right. last year and stuff. And I don't think it's that he hurt right. that ranking. But no, I think mean, he's about the on same a place one year, It was a one year, $5 million deal. That's what you're getting from a right. veteran. Yeah, the, the, the truth reliever. is that, I mean, starter. O- overall, I think he did about what people expected or what it would you would is it the question with him with somebody like him is every year there's less chance of an upside of a breakthrough right do you know what i mean oh, so yeah. so so like the fact that he signed a one-year seven million dollar deal at that what it was one seven i think like it was six, something like but that yeah, basically basically yeah maybe it was one six with a one million dollar like buyout or something you know one six this year could he get that next year Maybe, but probably not quite as much. Probably like one four and a half. Right. Well, because each year you it, the the notion of upside disappears a little bit. Right. You know That's what I mean? right. Like yeah. The, it's not, it's not that the, the where he's it's the, like Sanchez the, for yeah, that the, matter. The truth it's is, the he's got a better track record, kind of or a, a longer track record of being about who he is. But you aren't signing him, be, right? Because you want that pitch well, in your and, rotation. And we talked about you know? this after we did the interview with Falvey at the end of the season, which is the last thing they would seemingly need, or we think they the last thing they need is a random right. veteran fifth starter type, right. whether that's Archer, whether that's right. Bundy, whether that's J Hap match, which by the they way, they have options for that in house, which by the way, we should say next week, well, next week's podcast, free podcast will also be, it'll be a Monday. It won't be yeah. Friday, right? We're going to be covering, I think, starting pitchers. Yeah. So sort we'll of all the starting, starting pitchers, pitchers that we'll go through. 
And then in the meantime, I think this week we're probably going to be doing a mailbag. We might be doing yeah, a mailbag on Friday. So if you want to try that, go to the Patreon.com slash Gleeman and sign up before Friday. And that way you can get your question in on Thursday when we, yeah. we uh, ask P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Patreon.com slash Gleeman. Right. The last guy, Miguel Sano. Is that bad that I like almost just threw up? Talking <laughs> about? Uh, we've talked so much about Miguel Sano over the years and even the last several months when he got hurt. Sure. In the middle of this season or early on this season, I thought that was it. I thought, given how poorly he had played and the injury itself, which was a relatively yeah, substantial. You did not think he'd be coming back at the end of July. Right. But. He came back and played, uh, what, two games? Three games? A few games. And then went right. back on the injury list. It turns out he was already hurt again. He had, he had hurt himself by the, the last time he game returned. in St. Paul. Right. I will say, uh, you know, behind the scenes – they weren't exactly, you know, pushing for him to return. Right. Um, yeah. And so I think when he did return for that, like, 72 hours before he went back on the injured list and that was it, they kind of viewed it as, like you talk about, they, they're so hesitant to just part ways with an asset or somebody right. who has any chance. And so they thought, look, we can cut bait on this guy, which they'd, I think, already sort of mentally done, or we can just send down, you know, Mark Contreras or whoever on the roster. Right. And if maybe he's got something left, maybe he doesn't. Turns out he didn't have anything left and they, that was it. But, um, you know, I think it was clear even coming into this season that this was going to be it for him with the twins. Uh, it ended, you know, with a, with a whimper, like it, he, out of sight, out of mind, basically. Sure. I mean, it ended is, it with the worst possible taste as it could be. He was just right. terrible in April, just brutal. Right. And then just and a then, non-factor. Then a non-factor. Uh, right. The, it's funny though that like he became even when he was playing well, which is something we've talked about a lot. He be, because stylistically he people just find that type of hitter, whether it's him or Joey Gallo or whoever it is, so some people find right. that so off-putting. Just the hit two ten with a billion strikeouts and a bunch of power, and people just hate watching a guy turn and walk back to the. To the dugout after striking out, they'd much rather he just pops up yeah, like Max Kepler also, or whatever. I think it was, yeah, just expectations. Right. They were so Absolutely. outsized. But the the thing that will never like ten years from now, when people think of Miguel Sano, I feel like his highs are going to be snuffed out by the lows and the way it ended. In that his rookie season. <laughs> Was one of the three, I would say, best rookie seasons ever by a twin. Right. His and, and two, by the way, during what was a essentially a pennant race yes. for them. Yeah. Two years after that, he uh, made the All Star team and was having a great two thirds of a season, and then got hurt. Yep. And then two years after that, he started horribly. People were starting to say, like, just get rid of this bum. And then 2019, like in June. He caught fire and slugged like 600 down the stretch, and he delivered one of the biggest moments for the Twins in the last decade with the Grand Slam versus Cleveland right. to basically put the nail in the coffin of yeah, the division right. title. Yeah, and about he was that. spectacular right. for the last two thirds of that season. Right. You no, know, he hit 30 homers in 100 games or something like that. And so it was every other year, which contributes to the notion of him being inconsistent and hard to watch when it was going bad. But his rookie year, his third year, and his fifth year were all-star caliber seasons. Yeah. And so that's why I find it difficult. I know people are, love to label him as like the biggest bust. He is so far from the biggest bust in Minnesota Twins history that it's like right. he's not even on the list. Like you can't make an all-star team, <laughs> right. one all-star team, and be the biggest bust in anything. You certainly can't play at an all-star level in three of your first – seven seasons or whatever right. it was and be an all time. But I mean, go look and look at some of their, t you know, uh, David McCarty. I mean, they, <laughs> Rich right. Becker, Scott right. Stahoviak, right. Willie, uh, Banks. I mean, just go look Adam Johnson. Go, I mean, there's more recent ones too. Like th there are legitimate players who were not far off from him on the prospect ranking side who, we're not even like competent major leaguers at any point. Right. So I, 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 I reject that premise. With that said, you know, starting in 2020, 
just it, it exactly just, when they signed him to an extension. Right. They signed him to extension in the winter before 2020. Which I, which I thought was a good extension. Right. It seemed like a reasonable extension. It it just became increase, increasingly clear because of the leg injury, which he's got a titanium rod uh, inserted in his leg, and because of his size and lack of conditioning well, yeah, so and all that stuff. COVID in 2020. He got COVID. And also just right. stylistically, those guys don't age particularly well. If you're – a 200 strikeout guy at age 23, what are you going to be at 28, 29, and 30? And so I think it became clear at some point that he, the upside wasn't there anymore. And the, the downside was still there. These long stretches where he's just an automatic out were there still. Right. And you lived with that in 2017, 2019, whatever, because then there were stretches where he would just carry the team for a month. Um, but that became fewer and further between. And you were left with this guy who, would go, you know, four for 60 with 35 strikeouts and you would just go like, what, what is this even? And so even if the end result in a lot of those seasons, like even last year, he had a, I don't know, 108, 110 OPS plus, Somewhere whatever it was. Hit. I mean, he was an above average yeah. hitter. Now at first base, that makes you pretty marginal. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, that's part of it. Is that absolutely, he moved from third to first. Right. That ended up hurting. I mean, and frankly, they didn't even use him at third the whole time. They ended up trying to throw him into the outfield right. for one of those seasons, which was just a disaster. But yeah. So, I mean, like, that, it's a weird thing because I think that what we saw from Sano in the three good seasons, I believe it was first, third, and fifth Yeah, that's right. Him, You're right. Was every bit of the, th- the three years the Twins were competitive in in, right. in that in that particular decade? But was right. every bit the type of player he was supposed to become as a right. top prospect, which is a guy who hits, you know, two fifty with forty homer power and a bunch of walks, right. and that's what he was. But there was no ability to do that back to back seasons. There was no ability to stay healthy for full seasons, and then the last two or three years when it went bad. He was like almost unplayably bad, and I think there's no way to avoid that being the taste you leave in the right. mouth of everyone. Yeah. And so he will forever be, you know, labeled as one of the biggest busts in Twins history, even though I don't think that's quite true. And he will. I I can't remember a player getting more vitriol uh, over the course of his career, even when he was going well. And part of that is he was so great early that yeah. that raised the bar and there was a hype involved in all that. But you, oh, so you let's also at, forget that he had got Tommy John surgery the year before that. When he was in the minors. In the yeah. minors. You know, I, I, I think there is something about, you know, an extended period of being a bad franchise where you end up looking towards the minors for, you know, the heroes that are going to show up right. and turn it all around. And those heroes were Buxton and Sano. And as a result of that, you know, the expectations are – off the charts, and not just because. And I'll also say this, you know, people people will say, "Oh, well, the Twins are pushing these guys," or, or you know, the, they're tell Twins are telling us these guys are going to change change the franchise. Blah, blah blah. Twins aren't. I've yeah. never seen the Twins have a press conference saying this guy's going to change out the franchise. They don't put out a prospect list, even. No, <laughs> like, they, they, they don't, don't put out a prospect list. Sure. Right. That is. Paid uh, professionals that, are putting out lists when yeah. they try to rank these guys. Me, media is doing that, and and as sure. fans, we buy into it, and we want to sure. buy into it, right? So, you know, it's not Miguel Sano's fault that he had those expectations. It's not right. the Twins' fault that they had those expectations tied to him, right? right. Now, you know, uh, yeah, 2016 was a disaster, uh, you know, after the 2015 season right. where he ended up. In 2018 was but, a but disaster. But, you know, I will also say it's not totally clear that was all Sano's fault, that 2016 was a disaster. The, the, the idea that they were running him out in the outfield was, sure. you know, ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and then, to the, you know, it's... I mean, I think if you were to look, I would bet that for, you know, go look at, like, his prospect rankings over the four or five years he was in the minors. I bet he very slightly underperformed the average, like, wins above replacement for his rankings. Mm-hmm. Like, he very slightly... And that's just because when it was bad, it was so bad. Right. Yeah. But most players like that do, uh, you know, reaching the heights that he did. So, yeah, I'm a, it's, a, it's a fascinating Twins career. I will say that, you know, I stopped kind of, I don't know, quote unquote, defending him about two or three years ago just because once I no longer saw the upside, right. then it's hard to tell people that the downside right. or the, the off putting approach is worth sticking through. And I agree with that. I, I mean, I. By the way, we should mention his career is not over. He will get a major right. league contract this year. I'm very curious to see what he. Having the DH in the National League helps him a yeah. lot. Yeah. I've been saying, joking that like he's just going to sign a one year. 
five million dollar deal with the Pirates or the Diamondbacks or the right. you know fill in the blank National League team, the Marlins or something like that. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he has a couple thirty homer seasons. I just <laughs> still left. Right. right. Yeah. I'll be do, surprised right. if he's even within that like an all star caliber player. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I have yeah. no problem with the Twins parting ways. Obviously, right. I would have done it last season. But all yeah. right, I got to go do radio. Okay. Um, thank you to uh, BetterHelp, Uncommon Goods, uh, Feel CBD, and Raycon. And Raycon. We'll be back. Uh, you know, if something happens, obviously we'll do an emergency Patreon show. Right. Now would be the time to join the Patreon. We're not going to yes. be doing a whole lot on Patreon unless there are a- moves happening. Right. That's in right. which case, you'll want to listen to it. So it's yeah. P-A-T-R-E-O-N, Patreon dot com slash Gleeman. Otherwise, we'll be back uh, Monday next Monday to break down starting pitchers yep. and any you know news that has happened since yep. then. John will try not to jinx any further teams <laughs> that are playing. Uh, all right, goodbye.